How's it going? It is going. I hit the live button because I didn't think anyone was going to jump in. <laughs> Fear. I know because I thought I was going to go to this class, but I'm like, I don't want to meet a new people, right? A new person right now. <laughs> I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. How's it going? How's it going? It, it, it still is going. I have successful eyelets pressed because I had to do it. Awesome. Oh, those are nice. Oh, those are real nice. Funny ones, but we won't I won't point those out too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Let me run around real quick. Okay. Oh, I, I jumped on uh, a couple minutes early. But do you know I'm gonna go off in a second when and when people jump in, but I'm gonna go off about people who waste food. Okay. Have you have you seen people like on um, TikTok or like you know YouTube shorts that make those weird combinations of food or something disgusting? Oh yeah, like that. Yes, I have seen weird things. Some what's the, um, it's I like did my new pet peeve. Yeah, friends texting me, hearing weird things outside. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. And I can't find my rasp. It's, like, lost somewhere, so I've got this old pumice stone that I'm, like, filing my boning with. <laughs> but it works. Hello, Alibaba! How's it going up in the land of Canada? Oh man, my computer is there, go. How's it going, Alibaba? How's it going? Do you know I bought another Kenmore? Um, I think it's whatever. I bought another Kenmore sewing machine because I need professional help. And I thought of you, and I'm glad you're here. <laughs> because I'm probably going to try to get it going uh, this evening. <laughs> but I need my fellow sewing machine enthusiasts around. And I'm not saying that you're not Venus, you know. Crazy. Uh, no, I, I I am, but I'm not the most skilled in the um technical parts. I saw a cutter for those that rounded the ends. Yeah, I mean, I have my tin snips for chopping them but I these are plastic and so I don't have the um what's it called the metal caps that you put on the sprung steel boning and with my flat boning I usually just round off the edges too okay do you, do you seriously need snacks do you need snacks you're like you're talking to the camera. That means I'm supposed to have snackies. All right, Loki. Your sister asked first, though, so I'm going to put her in front of the camera. All right, goobers, you can sit on my pattern pieces. Oh, okay. Go on. <laughs> that one is not playing fair at all. Oh, oh, now you're standing on my headphone cord. Jesus, cat. Okay. Oh. So, lately... um. I'm on my newest rampage um, is people who waste food. I I um I can't watch those videos anymore because I follow. Um, oh, I'll I'll grab it. I'll grab the machine right now, Alibaba. I can no longer watch these weird shorts of people like making macaroni in a blender, or cooking a steak in a coffee maker, or like. <laughs> those are just crimes against food. Oh, we're, I, I, I feel like I'm witnessing the um, digression of the human race in real time. In real time. <laughs> I, and you know what? It all goes back to my parents. Because my parents were those parents who would like make me eat my Brussels sprouts, make me eat every last scrap of every meal. <laughs> so I can't go against my programming in that sense, you know? Yeah. And... um. And, you know, I know the old adage, like, you can't mail food to people in other countries, like, that's already cooked. But 
buying like 15 pounds of ground beef and um, with the intention to uh, like waste it on TikTok, the things that people do for the internet is really starting to weird me out. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure my neighbors um, look at me like when, um, when I'm like filming in front of my house, I'm literally prancing around with a coat that I made. <laughs> In front of my house on my own property, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's different than because you're gonna wear that coat or you're gonna sell that uh, coat. That time. coat's gonna be loved. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Let me jump to the disclaimer, but this is a Kenmore 158. And Alibaba, I think this is like the fifth or sixth one that I own that's like this model. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm gonna be doing a sewing machine audit pretty soon. Because it's fun to go through the inventory, the collection sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing that with my clothes and I've been discovering stuff that has been missing forever. That's what I'm saying, Alibaba. Like, when, imagine if you're if you're just hungry and you're watching people waste food. Like, it's no wonder people um, hate the West because it's not just people in America doing it. It's people in the UK, but it seems to be like mainly Americans doing it. It's crazy to me. Yeah. Um. Let me grab it. It's a uh, it's a one twenty one ten. But those sewing machines are actually solid. So when I fix them, um, I usually end up reselling those because people are like, "Oh, I remember that sewing machine." <laughs> <laughs> but I'm um, and you know, also it's weird to me that reaction videos in general are just weird to me. Maybe I'm old. <laughs> it depends on what they're reacting to. I watch a woman um, named Alexis Chipman, and she reacts to like old 1970s shows and stuff like that. That's okay, you know. Like, and, and I'm not gatekeeping. You can watch whatever you want, you know. Yeah, they're solid machines, Alibaba. They are definitely solid machines. <laughs> But I watched a video of somebody who cooked a steak in a coffee maker, and I was like, you, straight to jail. Straight to jail. <laughs> the only time I can see that, maybe, <sighs> is A, if you're traveling with very specific dietary requirements, or B, you're unhoused and living in a hotel, and that's all you've got access to. I've been unhoused. You go down to the downtown area or your or to your um, indoor, you know, your outdoor shop, and you get yourself one of those single burners that you can plug in the wall, yeah. and you literally have a kitchen right there. <laughs> the Kenmore Library books of attachments are made for those machines. I need to find like that. That's like a holy grail of um, of like instruction manuals because I have tons of instruction manuals and I never realized how much people covet them. I know. Well, they're paper. They're almost harder to find than the machines. They are harder to find. It sounds like. That's like my one for the 301, 301A. It came with all original paperwork and I'm like, this should be in a museum. I put it in a plastic bag and put it away because <laughs> it's so well, it's like so perfect. I also have um, my grandfather's Boy Scout card from like 19, 20, 30 something. And that thing, but I don't want to laminate it because the lamination process might destroy the card itself, you know? Mm hmm. I'm over. I'm so. Is this what our society has come to? I I know I'm going off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we can start early on the on the ranting. I'm um, I'm traumatized. <laughs> and you know, I watch one video and then I'll, I'll get suggested another, and then su get suggested another and another, and it's like, um, 
you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> but is but do you think um, there's a line? I, because of the way I was raised, there's a, a million things that I will not do to be famous. You know, there's a, a yeah. ton of things like <laughs> the Kenny Mog Mono Monogram. What? The, the the Kenmore monogram set looks like it comes oh. in a book, brown cover. There are several different sets. Gosh, I'm off today. You know that's you're not like, wearing uh, your glasses. I'm really not. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I was working on my coat. I was running around like a crazy person. I um, I had to go to the store, and then I was just tsunamied by um these videos <laughs> that I've that I've been watching. And it's just strange to me. And people get famous off of these videos. They're like, oh look, I'm gonna shame this person even though I'm semi participating. Oh well yeah there was the um oh I can think of a couple people that is oh but then there's the one lady, is she from Nigeria, who just loves to watch the people cook over, like, the fire? That one, he cooks actually good food, though. I've fallen into this one lady who's, like, how creative! And she is, like, you can see in her face that she's cringing, but she's, like, smiling. It's the funniest thing. But I don't know if it's because I'm squeamish. I can't watch people wasting food like that. Like someone made nachos on the table and I'm like, you're gross. This is why you can't eat at everybody's house. Well, did they at least put newspaper down like they were at a low country boil? I mean, sometimes you dump food on a table and eat like there's no well, tomorrow. They were not in Louisiana in the fifth ward. <laughs> I've been there. I have my beads right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was South Carolina. Oh, it's gross. Oh, it's gross. And I, you know, in the older, the older you get, you know, you try not to judge people do their own thing, but it's like, what, um, where are we going as a society? People are doing everything they can for notoriety. Well, we've lost, what are this, what we have lost marketable trades. So everybody thinks that the one trade that they have is being an influencer and being TikTok famous or Insta famous. People don't understand, or actually we, the kids, we need to start valuing those skilled trades again because pretty soon China's kicking us out. Everybody hates us. We're going to be SOL if the kids don't learn how to do stuff. And I won't be able to articulate it like other YouTubers, but basically the vo the dollar is being devalued so much that countries like Brazil, certain countries are now backing the yen and not the dollar. Oh, there's a whole thing today. Um, right, there's more oil trade happening in the yen or even the rupees getting higher valued than yes. the US and dollar. All these countries that we bailed out, like um, Saudi Arabia is going with China. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> they don't, Saudi Arabia doesn't need our help. <laughs> <clears throat> Seems like bad's become the new good. There was a young man who got arrested in my town for going around to the 7-Elevens and tackling the racks. He's on, he's on YouTube. It's in my hometown. He's an idiot. <laughs> <clears throat> and like what these kids don't realize like where i live like you know the cops are not gonna mess around they're gonna come looking for you immediately <laughs> yeah anyway i mean that's business loss expensive that right that uh, has this whole trickle down effect that they don't see because they're like people are gonna pay attention to me hey butterfly how's it going how's it going i have my um my godless sewing technicolor coat going <laughs> awesome i yeah my plan is to cut and file bones and finish the last hem and sew up the holes where i needed to cut that i covered over my open boning channels last night because i wasn't paying attention to which side i was sewing yeah i've done that i i've done that 
I, I've done that regularly. That's my new thing. That's why, like, when I'm when I'm streaming, I take my time because yeah. I make like super duper mistakes, <laughs> and then I'm mad at myself, and I'm sitting there three hours later trying to get back to step one. Right. That was I was thinking about this earlier. Is there a sewing skill or a part of sewing that like terrifies you to do either film or to do live? Um, buttonholing in general i hate it and for a guy who makes coats with nothing but buttons i know that's really ironic <laughs> do you sew your buttonholes by hand or do you have you braved a buttonholer attachment for one of your machines i now do it by hand i now um like i have it down i have it down to like a science now you know but even that's tedious um yeah it just, it, I don't know. That's a very good question. I'm trying to think. Um, actually, you know what? Because I was looking at it like I am a home sewer. Okay. I'm a sewist, but I watch like designers and, and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm like, you guys are in a different league. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know what? Um, big quilting machines scare me. The giant quilting machines. Oh, the long arm ones. Yeah. I um, I watched this channel. It's called um, Jordan Fabrics, and she has a machine that is literally um, the size. Uh, it's it's in a warehouse. Mm -hmm. the, the buttonhole attachment for that Kenmore is one of the reasons why they want that machine. That's very good to know because I have all the original attachment attachments and everything. That's very good to know. I'm trying to think. Um, it's just there's certain things that are intimidating, like. Even um, I've gone to several trade shows and the, the sewing machine that I want is so complex. I don't know if I could put it together in my own house by myself. <laughs> wow. That is Which an is, impressive statement. It's because it's so computerized. I'm old school. Like I yeah. use older machines because I don't like the computerized machines. Because once your screen goes or, you know, there's a million different problems. Yeah. You know? More tech, more problems. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I, I'm scared of a lot. Like I was scared of making collars for a long time, but then I started doing it, you know? Um, I don't know. That's a very good question. What, what are you, is there something that you don't, um, you shy away from? Well, I actually, I was thinking about that as like, as I was putting in buttonholes, like, or putting in the grommets for those lacing strips, like I could show how to do it, but doing it like however many times I did with the handful of grommets that didn't set right, like setting in grommets on a corset, that terrifies me <laughs> every time, especially because I'm like, I should do this first. So if I screw it up, I can replace that piece, but then you've already wasted so many grommets that it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I need to get back to doing tutorials. I used to do a lot of tutorials, but like no one cared. The people who watch my videos and the people that I love that always comment, like they, they were the ones who were saying, you know, but the people who were griping at me to make um, tutorials never said a word after, you know? Yeah. It's scary I think to it's... me that you get set up. set up when you get it. it. It just depends on what you're doing. I, you know, certain things are intimidating, but like um, two or three years ago, if you told me I was going to become the great coat maker, I would have laughed at you. Look at me now. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I would have said the same thing about corsets. And I'm like, I'm like fifth one because I, a honestly love wearing them and i learned something different from each one like my pink one is it pink my i've got like a, my fancy dress corset and this one is more of a riding corset for sports stuff i'm like oh sweet can i hoop in this now or my stays that are different you know i've been going through my closet and like <laughs> I I love upcycling. That is that is something I, I think I do it out of almost of a nervous habit. Mm -hmm. For for the longest time I was making Sancisco patches, 
but then I turned a pair of over of overalls into um, a piece of artwork. <laughs> yeah, and, and so all my patches literally got put on one on one piece. You know. Mm-hmm. Is there something that you've been working on for years? Like I have a coat. I'm gonna grab it. I have embarrassingly been working on this coat for years. I just have just been adding stuff on it. Yes, I, I have a quilt that's in my pile of things that like literally the top's not done nothing's done that i think is my longest project except i didn't start it but i have a probably two three two, half to two thirds to almost three quarters i know that's a huge range of a sweater that my grandma started to knit before she died oh wow and I think I'm going to finish it. Plus, I've got a couple of shirts and that, like, crazy... I've got a couple of things that she started that I want to finish, but I'm, like... I, they just scare me and make me sad to think about working on them, <laughs> if that makes sense, that I, like... Her tailoring and her skill was so amazing, and I'm, like, am I good enough to finish these projects yet? I know what you're saying. There, there's. Um, I actually am working behind someone that was a master electrician and mason, and I'm like, I have no idea what this guy was doing. <laughs> I've been working on this coat um, off and on for six or seven years. Ooh. And I made all the patches. And yes, it does say Antichrist, but I am not in my angry atheist phase anymore. But I kept the patches because it's just awesome. Yeah, I made it by hand. <laughs> awesome. And I actually um, got this T-shirt at a Mesopotamian exhibit at the MoCA in West Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Our mocha hands, they like, I'm a swag kind of guy. Like if you hand me free stuff, I will take it. <laughs> oh, I miss free samples. <laughs> and West Hollywood, um, West Hollywood, California has culture besides having, um, besides housing the LGBTQIA plus the community of Los Angeles. It actually has culture. <laughs> right. And the mocha is literally... Um, I want to. It's next to the police station, so it's on like Santa Monica and like Robinson. That's sad. I know the streets. I know. <laughs> well, have you? What is it at the FIDM? The they've got their costuming exhibit for movies and TV going on right now, or did it just close or something? Do you know what's really funny? I actually know um, uh, my old babysitter. Her daughter goes there. So I can probably look it up on Facebook <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to see. Just to go see cute costumes. Those kids can sew. They can yeah. sew. I absolutely love that. I even marvel, like in downtown LA, they still have the big department store windows. But instead of it being like Macy's or something, like private businesses come in and they put handmade dresses in the window. Ooh. I've even subscribed. To, I've... I've dusted off my Instagram because it's so frugal. 2023. Because I made you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, guess I, found so this, <laughs> I found this really cool site of the Santee Alley in LA where they sell really obscure stuff. But there's, you know, but because of the modern era, they're promoting it. And like, that is the fashion district of LA. That's where you go to get giant bolts or that weird, crazy fabric. There was a, um, a really viral vi video of a young man who made a dress. Once I finally looked at the address, I, I, I like looked at the streets. I was like, dude, he's in L.A. <laughs> hey, Mark, how's it going? How's it going? We're just we're just rooting and tooting and scooting. <laughs> I just like saying that it's an Australian term. It's not necessarily a term of endearment, but it's just it's about riding motorcycles. <laughs> And I, I got it from an old, uh, from somebody who was from Australia. I actually have um, a weird collection of Harley t-shirts. And my Australian Harley shirt is the only one where I didn't go to go get it. 
every Harley shirt I own, I actually went to that particular shop. <clears throat> I've been to Clovis, New Mexico, Saskatoon, Canada, <laughs> um, Juneau, Alaska. But I'll I'll be real. I took a cruise ship to 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 Alaska. I did not take a motorcycle. <laughs> No, because people front and they're like, yeah, I took, do you know how long of a ride that would be from Southern California? I know your butt would, you'd have saddle sores. <laughs> you would hate yourself. You'd be walking <laughs> like you've been riding all day with the, the cowboy legs. America from, from coast to coast is roughly what? Three, three and change, 3000 miles or something. I think so. Yeah. Cause it's like two, a, uh, 250 300 from one end of this state and about the same from the next state over so that's six plus whatever you got i can't imagine the mosquitoes on the helmet from riding to la to angry <laughs> do you know i i always brag my my big like not so humble brag is that i've been all the way from guatemala to um, vancouver canada on the five freeway <laughs> on the I west coast to guatemala that i it, it's um an international highway it goes from guatemala guatemala is the start of the five and it goes all the way to um alaska so that's why we have all the trafficking and all the <laughs> and the syphilis up don't be don't stop at a rest stop on the five because you might get syphilis <laughs> Not oh, medical gosh. advice. We didn't do our disclaimers. Oh, I need to because I, I just jumped into my rant about people who waste food, and I, I'm going to go off about that again. <laughs> oh, wrong page. Wrong page. Wrong page again. How's everybody doing here at the Godless Sewing Channel? We are all about sewing mayhem and having fun, and we're about respecting each other. So please do not take any medical advice, legal advice, spiritual, or lack thereof spirituality. You know what? I am literally a shrub on the internet with an opinion, and I dress like Val Kilmer. And if you don't like it, we have exits on both sides. And if you speak Spanish, that's Amazquierda and Derecha. Thank you for flying Godless Sewing Airlines. Back to you, Phoenix. <laughs> hey, welcome. Welcome one, welcome all. Grab your cuppa, grab a project, and tuck in for a wild ride. <laughs> and back on, on that theme, today is, let's see. Oh, today's American Circus Day. <gasps> That's my <laughs> yes. We can have hula hoop acts and some strong human. I have some strength and my crappy contortion tricks I can do. What would you like to see? And I picked out music for my act, I think. Awesome. So when you pick out music for your act, is it like um, like non-controversial? Um, what is the word that I'm looking for that I completely lost? Um, Non-copyrighted music? Uh, I think people do anything because the usually when I, perf it's at closed events that are not, broadcast so probably technically there's some things that we should be paying attention to but i do try to do copyright free music i don't know if this new one is but i was like overthinking and i'm like i can move and do fun tricks to whatever music because i know how to count beats so i can fit in <laughs> anything and i have not the hugest directory of tricks but I've got a fair amount of tricks up my sleeve I can pull out when the mood strikes me right. Oh, the Baba, your waiter. the waiter will be right by. And uh, <laughs> please remember, he's extremely moody, so be nice. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, al There's no alcohol on this plate. <laughs> Cocktails cost extra. <laughs> Let's see what other day is it. It's also Armenian Appreciation Day. That's a big deal here in LA. Um, yeah, did you get some chicken from the chicken? Oh, Zanku. They put one in my town. That place is becoming huge. Um, okay, this one made me laugh out loud. Don't go to work unless unless you have to. Day that is today. So I failed that one. 
<laughs> I did have to. I don't I always get the option of working from home. But I love it, but yeah, no, some things I can't. Quick question. Any tips on sewing sequins? I'm altering straps. Do you oh, want to feel I... this one or I can feel this one, I think. No, no, please. Please go um, ahead. A beading. It, well, the, the, okay, so the first, the questions are, how are you attaching them down? Because you can either use a bigger needle and sew it and make it flat or loop it around a seed bead so then it looks, it comes in and out of the same hole and then you move on to the next one like I'm doing on the, um, these guys is one with a seed bead and then I go to the next section by hand. I only, I only sew them on by hand. I'm scared to do it by machine, even though I think you could, um, take off the presser foot, but then lower the presser bar and set the stitch length to like gigantic. You could probably do it on a machine, but I just do it by hand. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried it on, um, Brunhilde yet. I probably should. Oh, Alibaba saying by hand, unless you've done free motion without a foot on it. Okay, now I'm going to have to try that. Actually, just sleeveless straps taking in shoulder strings. Well, I mean, are you going to either pick off the sequins that you have so you can use them later and then just re-sew them on by hand is probably what I would do for little shoulder seams. All right, Alibaba, I... I'm going to have to try this because Brunhild does everything. <laughs> She's my baby. <laughs> are, um, are sequins expensive? Uh, it depends. <laughs> at cart rate sequins, which is where I ordered my three pounds of sequins from, they were, I mean, I was only trolling the discount section, but I it was like a dollar or two for the 500 grams and like three or four for the thousand gram bags no that's oh, yeah a thousand grams not kilos because i got a lot of them or <laughs> yes the glue gun. that ton. is so true yes. I, I yeah they were not a that expensive. A thousand gram. no a kilo I, is 2.2 pounds so that's um a thousand grams. Yeah, you're right. Do you know I got that from a rap song? I got it from chemistry class. There's some things like there's 2.12 miles per <coughs> kilometer and 2.21 pounds in a kilo. <laughs> there's a, a rapper from uh, Wu-Tang Clan. He was... Um... Wrapping measurements, but literally. <laughs> oh, that's funny. The size 14. You could probably do that. If you're going to use this, do the seed bead method, I would get a, a beading needle because the it's more slender the whole way through to fit through the seed bead. Seed bead. I, somebody was talking about something that they were wearing and they were saying it, it was expensive, but I think it was the amount of time that it took to make the garment. That happens sometimes, like crocheted Irish lace dresses. Those take forever. Like I was watching um, Drag Race last Friday, and this person had a leopard dress, but each, every single, uh, it, it was like shimmering and shaking, but every single piece was stitched in. Oh god! And yeah. it took it took them like it took them a while to make it. Yes. In there, baby. I'm still, I'm still like um, deciding what. Uh, man, my phone is not liking. I'm still deciding what I should do. Should I make a poncho? I'm at this weird impasse of like, when I make coats, I reach this weird point of like, do I really wanna? Um, add a zipper and do the lining on, or should I just make a poncho? <laughs> <laughs> the, 
because what, what I'm getting for summer. Do you really want to be making another jacket or do you want new clothes that you can wear now? Well, I wear, see, I, I'm Gothic. So I wear long sleeve all year long. Right. I'm so okay. Weird. Yeah. I'm no, so weird about that. Like <laughs> it's, it, and honestly, sometimes I think it's an insecurity because I'm really skinny. So then when I do show my arms, I'm like, Oh man, you know, so I wear long. I rock you long start sleeves. Lifting so you can like have something to flex. <laughs> you know, it's my job. My job keeps me buff. Yeah, and that's the thing. It keeps me skinny because I'm constantly moving around. You know, there is a gym at my job. <laughs> you have everything at your job. You should just stop complaining and use the stuff at your disposal. <laughs> I do. I go skating in the gym all the time <laughs> and fill myself with my new coats. I, I have, I have brought the auditorium back to life because like we only really use it for events and stuff like that. And we have an event time of year. And then like, it's you, like if, if the clients want to put on a show or something, we bring in um, like any religion that anyone believes in, we will bring in, um, whatever, you know, figurehead of that religion, and they'll have a ceremony in the auditorium. But it's not readily used. Like, I started mm. renting it out because I'm a capitalist. <laughs> right. But even renting things out is kind of a bust sometimes because if you get a bad group of people, that they're on your property. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and a bad group, group could be the badminton club. <laughs> you, know, you know, like, you Those never shuttles know. went flying through the windows again. <laughs> no, because I've, I'm anti um, Narcotics Anonymous and, and AA, but I've let them have um, meetings and, well, no, not meetings, ceremonies at, at the hall because the hall's huge. That mm -hmm. stage, when I'm filming, my camera is in the middle of a giant room. <laughs> so it's all spatial perception, you know? Size 14 for general fabric, not for strap. But I've, I've, I'm the one that has pretty much brought that place back to life because COVID, we can't necessarily, because of COVID, there's so many restrictions now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And especially like in in-home care facilities, you're already worried about um, scabies. You know, you know the list. There's a, right. literally yeah, a all list. Things, right. <laughs> those congregate care congregate care facilities are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now that's a yeah, vest that's butterfly. Stuff. Now that's a vest. The bad badminton boys. <laughs> You never know, though, because uh, I've rented it out to bikers and they were like um, they cleaned up after themselves. Couldn't even tell mm -hmm. they were there. The only thing you heard was the loud sounds of the bikes, you know, <laughs> as they were leaving and showing up. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling thunder is real. But like, you know, there was other people that like like never like I, I wouldn't rent to um, high schools. Yeah, teenagers are <laughs> bad news. <laughs> we we have special Olympics um, events there all the time, but like, it's pretty much me prancing around in the clothes that I've made. Right. Well, it, you know, it's a, it's a um, full care facility, but it, but like, people actually live there, and so it's huge on sixty five acres. You know, right? But you right, so it's like protecting the people that are there, making sure they're not going to like wander off and disturb the. <laughs> cottages or wherever folks are hanging out well we're out in the middle of nowhere so like if you're wandering near our property like you know us and we <laughs> we're connected to and own a horse farm which is next door and all the people that work and live there they live on the far side of the property so if anything really did happen there's a whole group of people that are there to help you know mm -hmm. The horse people are awesome, though. Like, I like horse people. It, those, those smells are not necessarily for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ailey, you've got the best comments. Straps might need the smaller ones. Even go down to a 10. The small needle will go through the weave of the fabric easier. 
the weave of this strap material. I, you don't need to correct yourself. You are so smart. I, you are, I, you make me curious, and I want to talk to you. <laughs> Seriously, you between you and Kilroy, you're our um, encyclopedias know. around here. Right. <laughs> I know. How is Kilroy? I didn't see them yesterday, and they're not here. To, I hope everything's all right. Yeah, they'll they'll be they'll be back. YouTube's funny that way. Yeah. YouTube is extremely funny that way. That's true. And it's 1030 on the East Coast. So, <laughs> And to all my Doctor Who fans, today is Fish Fingers and Custards Day. And if you get that, I love you. <laughs> it's a Matt Smith reference. I, um, I was in love with Doctor Who. I've kind of fallen out of love with it, but I'm going to watch the new Doctor just because the new Doctor is black and it's everybody's angry about it. Oh, perfect. <laughs> well, first, the uh, first when Jodie Whittaker became the doctor, it really shocks me how many people were mad that the doctor was a, uh, um, a lady. What, but we're talking about an, an androgynous alien that constantly talks about um, being ahead of the human race and always oh, says, yeah. oh, I used to be a woman. I used to be a woman. What do you think about about like. Um, internet outrage that changes things. Like, I watch Star Trek. The internet outrage has made the shows suck. And I'm a Trekkie. Anyone who knows me, like, I'm a Trek encyclopedia, you know? But they've ruined my shows. <laughs> yeah, well, and I think that somehow Netflix has got this way that they're canceling all the good stuff because of people's internet. Hey, Liz! Crazy. Hey! I was wondering where you were. Um, rage baiting, rage baiting sucks. It makes it, it makes for a horrible feeling. Absolutely, absolutely. I just feel like they, they have banked on our nostalgia and have gone, I, I don't know. I, I could go off about Star Trek, just how, um, <laughs> do you know, in the 1980s when they brought back, hey, Commander, how's it going? How's it going? Lost track of time. I'm actually at home. Hey, if you want to join, I'll throw the link in at any time. If you want to hop in, Commander, let me know. Oh, okay. I'll throw it in right now. I have um, We Can Dance If You Want To stuck in my head because I rock out at my house. <laughs> <laughs> I rock out at my house. Let's see. Is that it? Oh, it worked. They've changed a lot of the stream yard, like a lot of what the stuff looks like, so it just trips me out. Oh, that's I know. I wish that there was a way as a guest that I could have like comments through stream yards instead of having to like open up the YouTubes to comment there so I just talk so I appreciate everybody but if I don't respond verbally it's because we're busy or whatever <laughs> that's one thing um, stream yards that's one thing that they don't have but you know what though complaining in this one instance does work because people used to say stream yards needs this and this and at the end of every stream it has a suggestions box and people used oh, to great. always say we, we need a suggestion box <laughs> So if you remind me in a couple hours, I'll uh... <laughs> right drop that. I, yeah, that was Wave has always done that. I don't know why I fell into that one, but I, I, I like it. I know it. <laughs> Alibaba, um, what's the name of that song? Without me looking it up. Hey, Commander. How you doing? I'm well. I'm just I um I'm a sucker for 80s music, like 70s and 80s music because that's what my parents used to listen to, and I grew up with the MTV on the television all the time. I've told you, you about MTV oh, and our. Oh yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> the TV did not survive. I had an uncle who is a bad human being. He was a sheriff. A Los Angeles County Sheriff for over 40-something years. He was actually a hero in Vietnam. He did the real-life Forrest Gump thing and saved people's lives and brought him on a helicopter. 
he grew up to be a complete and utter uh, turn of a human. <laughs> but he hated MTV. I mean, to the point where he would call my parents and tell us, um, don't let your kids watch MTV. <laughs> I want my... I want my MTV. Oh, that's such a good song. I love Dire Straits. <laughs> oh, Ellie Baba's got it. Safety Dance by Men Without Hats. Yes. The reason I want to know is because Ellie Baba said they still tour. Like, I would go and see that. I would go. Those shows are fun. If the Scorpions come to your town, go see them. They put on a great show. I've seen. I've seen them way too many times for someone my age. <laughs> I really want to say yes, but I'm now starting on an alteration on a prom dress. I have to get it finished tonight. Oh, God. oh. you are the saint's saint. I got terrified uh, having to like hem my friend's kids' prom dress, and I was like scared to cut. I was like, oh my God, I that stuff terrifies me. It's pre I call it pressure sewing. Like, um, I actually got paid to make clothes, <laughs> contrary to popular belief. And there was one time that I, I forgot, and I was like, I have to make three dresses and have them, like, by tomorrow morning. And I completely God. forgot to do it. And I just had this dread and terror of, like, why did I forget? But my Mormon friends were really nice. And they loved their dresses, I'm, and they still were. I'm glad I got the night off, too. I have time to work on this thing that... I have up here. That's Robin Bollocks in the background. He's doing psychic cold readings now. He's um, <laughs> he's one of the Trump prophets, and he's doing psychic cold readings. And he actually used my grandmother's name in the Ooh. psychic cold reading, so I am making um, jokes about it. I have a question for everybody. Is it bad that I drove off a psychic because my mom's one of those like rich old ladies. And I felt like he was ripping my mom off. Oh, it's a, it's an excellent thing. Cause those people are shysters. You know, Robin Bollocks had about 300 people easy in like the room that he was talking about. And he goes, is there anyone who knows someone named Myrtle? Other than <laughs> so, like, is your your grandmother's Hebrew name was Hadassah and her name was Aster. And God God just told this to me and it's not like common knowledge or other shit like that. So yeah, psychics are bad. Psychics buy it okay. <laughs> I just I felt like he was ripping my mom off and like I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. Like, Yeah, there are people who are sh shysters, but I, there are people who, who, can, who are actually gifted, and they do exist. And, like if they that also one don't advertise, and like, they exactly. don't generally feel <laughs> for lots of money either. So that's kind of the a tell, like... Hey, Miss Cleo, and I, she actually was like from South Florida where I was. And I think I actually went to one of her yard sales in Weston, and I didn't notice it until they said, oh, yeah, that house, that's where Miss Cleo was. All right, Butterfly. So, um, uh, Miss Cleo actually has kind of an awesome and not so awesome story. The IRS, um, you know, Miss Cleo was huge in America. She was on infomercials. And for someone my age, when I would come home from parties or just hanging out with my friends late at night, she was on every commercial. And if you, I would fall asleep to her infomercials. <laughs> so when the government finally caught up with Miss Cleo and you can, this, this is a record. They said, they, they told her, Miss Cleo, you owe us $300 million. She said, okay. Miss Cleo paid it in cash. Holy shit. <laughs> That's what I said. That is some <laughs> Miami Vice drug dealer money. Like, Miss Cleo. So, so she didn't go to jail, but she moved to Canada. 
Miss Cleo now lives in Canada. <laughs> so now she has to deal with the new version of Bill C-11, which is like the Restrict Act, but Canadian. You know, yeah, I agree with you, too. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I agree with Go you ahead. on this one, Alibaba. Like, um, there was uh, um, a chic man who walked up to me one time and told me three things uh, 24 years ago, and everything he said was true. But he walked up to me, told me, and walked away. And that was it. And it still to this day trips me out. I journaled back then. So I'm cheating because I wrote it down, like everything he said. <laughs> but like um, he he walked up, had the trippy thousand yard stare, said what he had to say and walked away. I don't like charlatans. I Because I've grown up in a world of senior citizens because I'm an oops baby. <laughs> I don't like people who take care of, um, take advantage of senior citizens. It's like a... Yeah big pet peeve of mine there are some people that you can predict what they're going to do like just say what's the last thing that i would do in Oof. that situation and usually you can predict um impulsive idiots mm -hmm. and you can learn how to cold read people like um what was oh his stage name is Spidey. His YouTube is the Behavioral Arts. I'm gonna forget his real name, but he's a magician, cold reader, mentalist. Like there, there are some skills you can learn to make it easier. And then there's people who, who actually hear things from other places, uh, the the other dimensions. I don't know. I and again, I'm um, utterly and completely skeptic. But I to I've told you my UFO story on this channel. I've literally um, been deceased, <laughs> like my heart and brain stopped. There's all kinds of crazy stuff that happened in this world. I'm not denying it, but charlatans drive me crazy. Because in the skeptic world, people constantly say like, oh, I'm a non-believer of everything. Like if I have evidence for something, then guess what? I'm believing it. <laughs> and go to the Whaley House in San Diego. You'll see some crazy stuff. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. My, but my parents used to take me on ghost tours as a kid. Hey, skids. How's it going? How's it going? I feel like we should have... Um, Skits tip of the week. <laughs> <laughs> because you you get a um, sewing machine and then you reach that point of like, what do I sew? <laughs> you know? Oh, right. We should ask how the pillowcases are going along. And if he decided to do French seams like a a good sewist. One of my neighbors had a dog run away and then paid... And then, and they paid hundreds to a psychic at the time, at the same time as the mate had found the dog. Funny how the psychic couldn't tell them the dog was on its way home. Oh, I would be so, see, you see, I'd be fuming. <laughs> and then you got all the faith healers, right? Who wear glasses and hearing aids. <laughs> I've always wondered about that. I've always well, like, well, like the, Peter the Popoff had a hearing aid and he was getting information from all the prayer requests people wrote down through the hearing aid, which was a radio. Oh, that. <laughs> and like I said, like, I am no longer an angry um, atheist. Like, I, you know, the, the world's a big place, you know, but but shysters, um, you know, and we have laws against this. I watch, I'm addicted to Australian Inside Addiction, Inside Edition, because it's lit. Our Inside Edition has kind of fallen by the wayside. But they, um, in Australia, they found, they have um, scam calls, like in America, people cold call people. And they went and arrested a bunch of people in the Philippines because this man was an Australian citizen. And he was running a business, and they showed how they were ripping they were just ripping off old old um senior citizens in australia people who could barely afford to live their lives you know yeah that's gives a bad rap because i mean healing magics are in my world view 
healing magic is real that doesn't just second the you should actually consult with a physician if you ha or a licensed qualified medical provider and do all of the things but sometimes if you need an extra boost I may or not, may not have seen some amazing things happen through people working really hard. We can dance if we want to. We can stay all night. And <laughs> it is just blasting in my head right now. <laughs> um, Commander, you're you're not um. You're not a believer on that side, are you, in that sense? Um, healing magics. <coughs> no, I'm just saying, like psychics, like psychics in general. Um, in general, no. And there are, like, weird things, like a few days before 9-11, I was, but of course the idea was put into my head by a documentary about planes flying into the Empire State Building. And then I said, <sighs> I wonder when someone's going to fly one into the biggie. And sure enough, they did a few weeks later. When George W. Bush got elected, I well, I was at home and I went to bed and Al Gore was president. I woke up and George Bush was president and I said, by hook or by crook, we will be in Iraq. But again, that's not exactly mystic. That's judging human behavior. And it's easy to judge human behavior. I went really quickly, uh, Mark Short, I, I hate to say this, but this makes me feel better because we used to have a law where scammers were not allowed to call your cell phones. And then a certain president, a president deregulated that law or basically took that law away. So now I, um, I used to have a landline, which I got rid of, but I, I don't pick up my telephone. I honestly do not pick up. I look at my caller ID. Apple has the scam likely thing. It works, but they're, the scammers are so slick that they have a phone number that is three numbers off from my kid's school. So I see it and I instantly pick it up because I think it's my kid's school because he's homeschooled. They're constantly calling me, you know. And they spoof numbers too. You will get oh, a awful. number. <clears throat> and there's there's a connection between that particular president and multi-level marketing schemes. All the cool. MLM people have been having pictures with him. The problem was is that he deregulated everything. And so things that were like, okay, primatine mist inhalers were illegal because people were making drugs from them. He felt that it wasn't a concern, so he made them legal again. And guess what people are doing? <laughs> I can't say it without laughing because they put the same product out. With just they, It's epinephrine in a can. It's literally, um, in, in a, it's like, a, uh, it's just um, an epinephrine inhaler. And it works to some people. Other people, it will enlarge in your heart. Well, that would be bad. <laughs> but in America, we're you know we um, we we have pharmaceutical companies that have ads on television, and we allow them to put their products on the shelf, even if they're not safe. And these are over the counter drugs. That's why I was shocked when Tylenol got taken back, and all the trials Tylenol got taken off, because this is the second time in forty years that they've hurt children. Overdosing on acetaminophen is, was they putting adult doses into the Tylenol? Sometimes, but sometimes when your kid's sick with a, we did the medic, no medic, me, no medical advice. Um, If you're taking like the Robitussin PM or like the Mucinex PM, sometimes those also have acetaminophen in yep. them. So if you're giving your kid a dose for a fever reducing as an isolated compound and then using one of these multi-compound stuff, it's easier to get to the toxic loads. Because what is it? Only like 2,400 milligrams of acetaminophen before you need some extra NAC to process it from your liver. 
this is our not educational section for the <laughs> evening. <laughs> but it just just it's in general, ultimate. watch your doses. Right, and know what you right. Read all the ingredients in the thing, and then see: Am I double dosing, <laughs> um, or do I need to offset it with some IV? Because you can alternate ibuprofen and acetaminophen, but you can't do every four hours the same thing or you're going to get the toxic dose. The liver problem, yep. Oh, yeah, that's, oh, man. Um, So while I was going through, like, what day it was and what week it was, this week, the third through the ninth, is hate week. That's what I said. I had the same face as you, Phoenix. I was like, what? What is this? What is... I, I need to go back and read what the point of it was. Hold on, because I don't want to misquote. <laughs> I don't think there is a point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I really, but it really made me laugh because, um, oh, come on. You know what's so funny? iPhones remember everything except the last thing that you typed in. Oh, here we go. International Trombone Week. Trombone? Pat trombone. Okay. Week. Um, Holy Week, of course. Passion Week. We did the World Autism. Um, today's the third Fan Dance Day. I actually have quite a. <laughs> I hate broccoli week. Do you know what's so funny, Alibaba? Like the only lie I ever tell my child is when I sit at the dinner table and eat vegetables with him every day. <laughs> I joke. I look him in the eye and eat him. Like if if I'm eating them, you're eating them too. <laughs> you need your six to ten a day. <laughs> Broccoli isn't so bad if you have it with molten cheddar cheese. Oh, that's the same. I do that. I do. That's exactly it does how not I not need that to taste good. And, and so do beets. Beets are yummy. Oh, you beets. hate cilantro week? Oh, fear. Sometimes it does taste like soap to different people. I just found that really interesting. Hold on, let me find National National Gray Day. Hey, my my uh, my goatee. I can celebrate National Gray Day. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I need to order a new box of hair color. Hate Week is every week in the Southern USA. <laughs> I, I I think we've expanded that to the entire USA these days. <laughs> Do you know what's really funny? This is the first time I I grew up around surrounded by propaganda, but this is the first time where I truly feel like Americans do not like each other, like like certain states, like because everybody's always hated California. But I'll say, oh, I'm from California, and they're like, you're the downfall of Western civilization. You're you know they hate me just because. Uh, oh, has anybody told you you live in California? Yeah. Oh, tons. Tons. <laughs> it's actually stupid talk like that that's going to be the downfall because, like, you take things that Jack Kennedy and Johnson did during the deepest, darkest days of the Cold War, and you just throw those ideas that got the blessings of the churches and the synagogues in front of um, well, the churches today, I'm just speaking in general, and they're screaming communism and socialism and Marxism. So they're just screaming, stop. We're losing the definition of words. And what's happening is when everything that we found was normal in the last century is all of a sudden labeled all kinds of horrible things. They're looking towards the horrible things of the last century as freedom. I agree with you in that sense. And, and in a very weird um, segue, because this, this fits in what you were saying, uh, Commander, um, Hate Week is inspired by uh, George Orwell's novel, 1984. 
which oh, I read. Oh. And now that I'm thinking about it, I know exactly what Hate Week is about because in the book they have Hate Week. Oh, that Hate Week is clearly is clearly depicted an event in George Orwell's book 1984, and always observed in the late summer during that period. There was uh, military parades. It basically shows. Uh, <laughs> it's basically you can't creating... get. You can't oh, get 1984 in the state of Florida because they think 1984 is going to make the children woke. You 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 can't get 1984 in the public schools, but they want to put guns in them. Oh, Commander, you'll love this. So today is my uh, my friend Marquette. Today was his birthday, and he was hanging out. We were hanging out, and we were talking about a place called Palmdale, California. And he looks me dead in my eyes and he was like, oh, you didn't know? Palmdale is the Florida of California. <laughs> so you the mean new it's insult... the slong of California? <laughs> oh, it... <laughs> no, it's like, it's a lot of really right-wing people live out in the outskirts of L.A. County, out in the desert, out in the middle of... Um, Who's the head of the house right now? The Republican guy. He's from Bakersfield. That's an hour and a half over the hill. <laughs> Kevin McCarthy. And there's a there's a special that Midas Touch put out called Killing County. It turns out Kevin McCarthy's district is the most dangerous congressional district to live in in the entire country as far as murder goes. Oh, that's exactly. Fact, it's cow country. It's no joke. Like, Bakerfield is no joke. Like, people think L.A., you have to be, like, gangster and tough. No, that's real cowboy country is where Kevin McCarthy lives. That's real cowboy country out there. Right. Got to protect your cows. If you don't have a gun, there might be coyotes or bears. It's one of those places you like San Bernardino County where you can actually carry a gun. So you see a bunch of people running around. Like, to someone where I'm from, to displaying a gun... To me, it's an open display of your impotence. I'm sorry, but <laughs> but that's just me, you know. Like maybe I'm too judgmental, but I, I want to say what like Mark. Um, I never realized like okay, California is left, but let's be real. They just want you to have health care. We have crummy laws like everywhere else, but in my state, everybody has free health care. You know, is it like that in Oregon still? Free health? Oh no. No, 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 we. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. No, they're getting ready to boot off 1.5 million people off Oregon Medicaid. Oh, they're probably gonna all move to California. <laughs> We're um, we have we still have free health care here, where um, they won't let you die. <laughs> but in America, in general, they will. People hate California because we have progressive laws. Like, like recently. Um, I got into it with my neighbor and those progressive laws saved my arse because this person was lying. But because they were of a, of a, of had a certain complexion for the protection back in the day, people always thought, oh, this guy's going to win just because of this. And no, the law was actually on my side because they took the facts. They took the facts and not the emotion behind it. You know, but now you've got the same laws that are trying to ban your gas generators and your gas engines. That's yeah, we're screwed on that. <laughs> like it goes both ways. I agree with you. No, that's insane. Honestly, that will be the reason why I move out of California. I'm gonna be with like um like you know, a 16 wheeler. You know, Commander, you're gonna have to come pick up all help me pick up my stuff. <laughs> That's how much stuff I have. Like it's it's ridiculous, you know. But I will be moving out of California if they if they legitimately pass that law. I have to. I was talking about it with with the um, woman in charge. <laughs> she doesn't know how any of my equipment or anything will will uh, how I'll be able to operate it once all these things are will be considered illegal. Are they gonna right. get rid yeah, of gas? What cases? I saw was at least in California, it's the banning of new things. So you can have what you have. You just, if it get if you need to replace something, that's where your SOL. But um, like, right, like right now the booming business is building charging stations. Are they going to phase out gas stations? They oh. How do these people in HUD, they, who the electric, <clears throat> their crap, the slum landlords, there's no way those, it, it, 
it's unrealistic and impossible. Like even today, mm -hmm. I was I was clipping my backyard, and I'm like, my um my weed whacker will be illegal in one year. At least I won't be able to buy another one. I won't be able to buy another one because I have a gas powered weed whacker. <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, it's probably going to turn out to be such a clusterfuck. They will um, not enforce it and then later repeal it. I use a lot of electric equipment and a gas gen is 100% needed. And yes, yes, it absolutely is. And I, I'm talking about more from like cutting trees and pulling stumps out. Like my 1988 truck... I could wrap a chain around a root of an oak tree, which I've done, and put it in four low and drive away with the trunk. Will I be able to do that with an electric vehicle? They actually have a lot of torque. You might actually wind up breaking your vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually and what I mean by way. that is pulling, it, pulling the vehicle apart because there's so much torque. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And like with my old, my old beater truck, I, man, I, I have done some, uh, I put that thing to the test and I've, I've towed a trailer on that multiple, multiple different types of trailers. It, a fact is four out of five gas stations have closed down. The mega station took over, over from two pumps. Same here. We are like literally all shell or there's what used to be 76. It's like we only have certain companies here. Oh, I Chevron, Belvoline. Oh, no, Belvoline exactly. oil. Sorry. No, we have Chevron. That's right. We have Chevron. And then it's like AMPM and, you know, like the major corporations. Yep. I can't see how they could outlaw gas engines. There's just no technology to adequately fill the gas, the gaps it leaves. I agree with you. That's why Californians are like, like y'all, y'all are telling me I can't use my stove or my generator. You're out your mind. <laughs> and what chef wants to cook on an electric stove? Nobody. And Dutch my... stoves heat very evenly, but regular stoves with the coils, yeah, mm -hmm. not so much. But induction does it better than the propane. My grandmother. The two had a best are the propanes and induction. My how grandmother do you had, walk on that? They don't work, and you could burn exactly. Okay, that's such a good point. My grandmother had one of those, and one of the reasons she had to come live with me was because I'd walk in her house, and her stove would be red because she left it on, and it's just sitting there cooking the cooking the stove and everything on top of it because the coils will not turn off, you know. And I know in in today's world, they put regulators on everything. I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm extremely skeptical on this one. I am extremely skeptical on this. And, it, and it's I've gonna never, be. Oh, go ahead. Never had a gas stove in all my life. Never had a gas stove. That's so weird to me because, like, I have a tortilla addiction, and I cook my tortillas on my gas stove at like three in the morning, five in the morning, so you know, like all day long, you know. Well, you know, I lived in Florida where there was no gas um, set up. And then I moved to Virginia into an, an area where we had gas for the heater, but we still had the electric stove. Just I've never had gas stoves. That's crazy to me. They're the best. <laughs> but it's one of those things like um i used to only cook um like barbecue with coals until i bought a propane uh, barbecue and now i'm like hank hill <laughs> where I, love a little, propane. I mean a propane i do love the taste of coal barbecue but in certain places where Flames and embers might cause natural disasters. Having a pro like that makes a that I can, that makes sense. It doesn't taste as good, but I get it. 
I love making my own charcoal. There's a grocery store by my house called Bayarta, and they make their own charcoal. And it's like, it's real charcoal. Do you so um I am so curious do either one of you have hispanic themed um grocery stores by your house like full chain grocery stores not chain they're mom and pops but yes mm. um they're just little stores they're not we have they're um, not full anything chain big we have a place called Vallarta where you walk in, it has a bakery, it has um, a real butcher, like a real butcher, because I I grew up more on the Hispanic side and less than the African American because my grandparents were around, you know, I literally lived within walking distance of my mom's parents. And so um, this place reminds me of my grandmother's cooking. And they have a restaurant inside uh, and a grocery store. And they're humping some of the... It's the only grocery store I go into and I'm dancing the entire time. And people are laughing at me, but they're playing like merengue. And they're playing like these like these happy songs, you know. <laughs> but it just trips me out because in Southern California, we have, we have um, um, like uh, Korean... Um, um, grocery stores or philippine like grocery stores that only sell food that's from the philippines and i wondered if it was like that anywhere else it is if you live in a big enough city like when i lived in seattle metro area there was all sorts of great korean groceries or there was like the why do i not gonna be able to say it right or remember the name of it but oh that was the best to go to the korean day spa and then go to the grocery store <laughs> I've said this a hundred. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Commander. I was just going to say South Florida had tons and tons and tons of specialty stores. When I, I lived know, there. That's, I know I miss for having a being in a town that's got like six synagogues. There is no Jewish bakeries. And I'm very disappointed by this fact. I want rye bread so bad. Do you know what's so funny? I take that for granted too. Like I don't know what I would do without um without a bagel shop within like walking distance of my house. We have a bagel shop, but it's run by a little a cute little Filipino lady. <laughs> And, the, and, like, when I left the L.A. area, I told you, like, when I left the L.A. area and the first time I went up north, I went to good old Tacoma, Washington, Gig Harbor. Shout out to Gig Harbor, smelling the, the Tacoma aroma. But it was... <laughs> <laughs> that place stinks. <laughs> yeah, it's, but, a, it's a port. Oh, man. I wasn't ready for it. And I remember I made a face... And everyone, they were dying to tell me. They were like, ooh, you smell that Tacoma aroma. <laughs> You've never been to Venice and smelled the canals. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Oh. <clears throat> oh. Are you talking about Venice, California or Venice, Italy? No, Italy. Venice, Italy, because <laughs> it's a fucking sewer. And I knew someone who told me, well, then when they went to um, Paris... The whole place stank like a fucking sewer. And since everyone was flushing oh different kinds of meals into the sang, every, you know, they were eating different things. The smell never really went away. Okay, really quick disclaimer to all my French brothers and sisters. I love you. But to anyone who knows me, I've been there. And I agree with Commander. I've been there. I, but I love you. My niece actually went to France and taught English, and she almost married a young Frenchman, but culture got in the way, and now they now hate each other. <laughs> but it's uh, uh, we have all sorts of different supermarkets here, but only in the cities. I think that's a, that's one thing. Um, when I moved back to my my hometown, I didn't realize how much I lived in LA County until I came back here. Because of that, of, of the diversity. Like, you, like, can you get um, Filipino food, like, in the middle of Nebraska or, like, Oklahoma? <laughs> you 
you never know. <laughs> right, you could, could like just like you could get all sorts of Somali food in Wisconsin because there's a huge small, or is it Minnesota? Something it's is Minnesota. It, like, right. And, Why would you go from the desert to Minnesota? Um, same as in Maine. I um, uh, if they were, yeah, they were Somali. There was a town in Maine. I've been to Goolsbury, Maine. <laughs> Most northern, I think it's the most northern city in America. One of it's basically eye level with Canada. <laughs> um, but I pulled into a town because let's be real when you start going north, you don't see people that look like me. And I've been to Maine, so you can't tell me it's I've, I've been to Bangor, people of color live there. That's different when you get out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Um, long story short, I pulled up in the town in the middle of nowhere in Maine, and it was all um, Somali, all people that were Somali, and they were sent there. You know, every war that we've ever fought, we bring people into this country. Every war. There's a huge population of Hmong Chinese um, people that live in Northern California. Or I'm sorry, yes, Central California. Yes, the real California. Northern California, like right <laughs> over the border. <laughs> And they may or may not be participating participating in a whole bunch of the illegal girls and stealing our water. There is someone that stole the water from our ranch. And if you're watching it, if I ever catch you, <laughs> I'm going to tie you to a tree and slowly read the Bible to you. <laughs> that would be torture. <laughs> oh, that is torture. <laughs> and on the first day... God has said, you will learn how to thread your sewing machine. And on the second day, you will learn how to get your bobbin wound. <laughs> Is it bad that I'm biased towards um, Singer sewing machines because I'm an American and they're more readily available to me? Like if I lived in Germany or somewhere else, I'd have access to different sewing machines. No, it's what you're familiar with. I'm I'm in I love a, with. The, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I have a bias towards LeBlanc laves, and um, diff, yeah, I'm just familiar with different um, tools. So I'd prefer to buy a LeBlanc, or I would prefer to buy a um, Ko Lee or a Brown and Sharp. If you're talking about grinders, I kind of had that. I kind of had that conversation today because my boss asked me why I am like so stuck on my truck and I don't get a new one, but I don't want to break in a new truck. And they're they're nine times more expensive than the one. Like my truck's paid in full. I don't want to have car payments. I don't want to have a vehicle that I can't smoke in. Like, <laughs> you can't fix yourself that you need to take it to a shop to plug it into a computer and say, what's wrong with me? No. And it tells you. And then it says you're shit out of luck. <laughs> your pressure's low in your tires today. Singer was the first multinational corp. They were from Germany, UK, France. <laughs> Australia, Australia. <laughs> I have singers from around the world, and and um, I always jokingly say that. Well, in one of my videos, I I actually bought a table singer. I think it was a stylist, and it was from Canada. It didn't work, but it politely said, "I'll try again." <laughs> <laughs> How, how boot you try it again? Sorry, <laughs> Alibaba, that was my worst Canadian attempt at a boot. <laughs> but I actually do have a few Canadian um, singers. A few. That one, that one was my first. Singers are worldwide, even copied now in India. I've said this a million times. I want the um, the um, right, the, the new hand cranks from India oh, just to so bad. just cause. Could I <coughs> hold on? <laughs> no, my plan is I know a family from India, and one of the siblings has a tailoring shop. And I'm like, how much would it cost me the next time you come over to visit your progeny here? That was literally my question. That was literally my question. Like, or like, um, 
Well, if I went there, could I just bring one home with me? Probably. Probably. The, the hard part would be how much does it cost, or does it weigh 50 pounds or less, and how much is it? Are, is the baggage fees going to be? I knew someone that would go on vacation and mail stuff home, but that gets expensive. It does, and it takes weeks. And you know what? Fun fact, if you go to Disneyland, they'll let you mail stuff. If you go to any of their stores, they'll let you mail it to your house. Fun fact, yeah. because they want your money. <laughs> well, did you Disney's having their issues in Florida with Disneyland <laughs> right now? No one Megan? would ever steal. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What did you say about Florida? Oh, the Disney and the uh, Reedy Creek special projects, because DeSantis has been trying to cut Disney's like special privileges and actually make them pay taxes and not live by their own law of the land. Well, Disney, actually, the Reedy Creek Improvement District wound up providing about a billion dollars to Kissimmee, St. Cloud, and Orlando and all those areas. And then when they took it away, they were like, oh, shit, we got a billion dollar shortfall. So we'll see how this all plays out. You would need to pay import duty. So even because I, I was thinking about that, like, um, because when I was of a certain age, my dad took me on extravagant trips and I want to return the favor with my son. And he has a passport. But I'm a fool. So I would want to, I would be like buying sewing machines and figuring out how can I get this sewing machine from Sri Lanka home? <laughs> can you do what radar? Me, yeah, can you pack me in your suitcase? Because I'm little, I'm bendy. <laughs> Why don't you just like take it apart and ship it a little piece by piece? It's not a bad. I actually. <laughs> You'd be amazed what you could do with the with the mail. That's not a bad that's, uh, not, that's not a bad idea. But the problem with sewing machines is that they're so heavy. And like if I bought a vintage sewing machine or like like um part of me wants to go to Japan, but I would probably spend more money at thrift stores and buying old beat up sewing machines. I would probably come home with like, you know, 15 Japanese sewing machines, you know. You'd have to set yourself a limit. Like, per country, I can get one machine per country, and that's what it's going to be, kid. <laughs> I've, I've thought about this because um, a friend of mine, she's traveled around the world, and I kind of sent her a weird message on Facebook. I was like, so you recently went to the UK. Would they let you take any sewing machines back? And she laughed, and she's like, look, on a cruise – you wouldn't want to have all those sewing machines in your room because that's where they would have to be. And then when you'd have to get them through customs, I'm almost willing to do that. <laughs> but Too I don't know bad. I... My... Oh, sorry. I'm go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Please oh. go ahead. Too bad my mom's first mother-in-law, ex-mother-in-law, is not alive because she smuggled a giant cuckoo clock from Soviet Poland to America without paying any duties. Well, then, no, she paid. Oh. It was just like, here, could you please keep your mouth shut and let me bring this <laughs> through Staten <laughs> Island? That's another thing. My grandparents traveled around the world. Like, I have Russian dolls. I have, like, that's literally from Egypt, that tapestry there. Like, I wonder if she paid anything because she was extremely frugal. A sewing machine from India would likely be poorly made. I have a, an Indian copy of a CLS Lister engine, and I have made an offset pin for an idler gear. It, it was 0. 0.06. That's from where it should have been. 16th of an inch. That's really, really bad. I actually bought a wench um, from Amazon. And it was everything was put on backwards. So every single person was like, this wench doesn't work. This wench doesn't work. I literally took it apart, reversed everything, and it worked. <laughs> they had the white rotary of winches. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, I had the benefit of an electrical engineer over, over my shoulder. But like Amazon, um, they'll sell duds. 
but I, I agree with you. There are certain things that come from, um, I order a lot of stuff from China and, and some of it is really good. And some of it is like, why did I order this? Why am I, this is, I need to stop with these compulsive buying. I'm serious, Liz. <laughs> I think about this all the time because like, when um, he was younger, my ex-wife and I, we took Isaiah on quite a few cruises before the whole... Was it Listeria? You mean the Coof? Oh, Listeria no. or Narwhal virus. Those are the gastrointestinal or the, or things the, that plague cruise ships. Or the um, plague. Ever since the plague, like I refused to step foot on a cruise ship. <laughs> But I had a really good time on cruise ships, and they're beautiful. I don't know. I'm getting the traveler's bug because my son is reaching that age where he can drink drink in other countries. Don't you have to be 18? It's like 15 in Mexico, 16. Oh, okay. and he's like, oh, he's like reaching. He's, he's young. He's not near any of that age. Right, he's getting like, close, but not quite yeah. there yet. <laughs> I'm not talking about today or he tomorrow. Was 18 in Germany. No, like in Mexico, um, when I was a kid, they actually no. Remember, I looked that up. They've changed it to 18 because every American with an ID would go over on the weekends. Yeah, and it used to be 19 in Canada. I don't know. Is it still 19 there, Alibaba? That was just the surface of what had to be done. I I agree. You know what? I, I'm a zealot when it comes to sewing machines. So I'm like, I will buy it and then figure out, figure it out. If it doesn't work or not, I don't care. You know, the ones making Astro sewing machines. And you know, it's so funny that I've watched their videos in Pakistan. Hammer have the top and lower main shafts in it. Singer would line the cast and shafts in the cradle and press them in perfectly lined up. I know what you're talking about. I've watched many of videos of them putting the, it together by hand. It's impressive. You know what? I would buy one just for it to be a wall hanger <laughs> in my muse in my fleet museum. 21, but always. <laughs> uh, Mexico, it's 18 in the UK. Um, Alexa, what's the drinking age in the United Kingdom? According to Wikipedia. The drinking age in the United Kingdom is variable across jurisdictions and ranges from 16 to 18. Wow. Yeah, because wow. I was in Canada and it used to be 19, like a gajillion and a half years ago when the dinosaurs rolled into the land. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, same. That's my references are all from the covered wagon days. All. <laughs> Basically, yes. <laughs> When the Oregon Trail was <laughs> happening, that's my references. Oh my gosh. Um, I love cheesy movies, and I recently rewatched Don Knotts' Shakiest Gun of the West. It's free on YouTube. If you, It's just a feel good movie. I love Don Knotts. Um, just that's a sewing recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> oh I my love Bob. It just ran out. Sorry. I'm in the. Oh no, that's the, the word. Singer sold the retro one a couple years ago in red. I remember that from Singer India and sold them as decoration. Why do you need a decoration sewing machine? If it doesn't work, I don't want it. I'm like that too, but there's some that I can't work on, like my Belvedere. Um, that I it's literally a wall hanger. I love Don Knotts, Shakiest Gun in the West. I love Don that. I watched that movie because um, I'm a bit of an insomniac. So I'm like, if I'm going to stay up all night, I'm going to like enjoy myself. And I reach a certain point where I stop because I watch such serious things. It takes a toll on you. <laughs> so I started watching Don Knotts and Ernest Bordenine movies. <laughs> um, Super Fuzz. And um, Future Cop 2 is on uh, YouTube. You should watch it. Ernest Borgnine is just good old school crummy movies. I love Don Knotts, Butterfly. Like, I absolutely love Don Knotts. When I was in high school, I had a VW um, bug, and I named it Herbie. Oh, God, Herbie. 
Herbie the Love Bug. I miss that movie. Herbie was awesome. That was my first real taste of freedom. That car wasn't even fast, but I loved that car. But you could fix it in your driveway and nobody complained. Oh, that thing was a lawnmower by today's standards. <laughs> I love those old VW bugs, man. Like, you get me near one of those things, I'll make it, I'll shock you. <laughs> Ooh, uh, see, Liz knows. Herbie was was the one, the one with Tim Conway, Private Eyes. I love those movies. Yeah, do you think they could remake that movie today? No, because we're too politically correct. We talk too much, and I'm and I'm saying that from the sense of like, um, like people. <sighs> I don't even know how to say this without offending people. It's like, like you, like we, we have the right to be offended. Herbie loved those movies. Absolutely loved driving VWs. Absolutely. Those were some of the greatest memories of my life. That was like the, my first real taste of freedom. Like first thing I did was go to the beach in my car slowly. <laughs> Private eyes. I'll have to check that out. Do you know a lot? Like, I, I like you couldn't even redo a lot of like the old action movies because people are like things are so politically correct nowadays. So they'd have to like put them in different countries and not make certain references, you know? I, right, right. Like, what about Flash Gordon? I loved Flash Gordon. <laughs> Flash. That, I just laugh about that because I have a set of three gold juggling balls, and it would I was like it would be fun to do an act of like Flash. Golden and me, I can't juggle. I tried. I've learned from a, a circus artist who trained at the National Circus School in Montreal, and I keep trying, but I failed juggling class. And I think I'm his like Ty's worst failure. I keep trying, but I can't juggle. It's so hard for me. <laughs> that was uh, my high school trying to teach my uncoordinated generation how to juggle that was like part of the curriculum i couldn't do it i now i mentally have the concept down but i still like i just can't get that groove going my problem i actually i figured out it's my eyes and sometimes they literally don't track after a certain part so it makes it really hard i should get that because my teacher was like, how's your juggling? I'm like, I'm sorry, Ty, it still sucks. I'm still your remedial juggling monkey. And he's an, ama he's an amazing juggler. And I, it's a circus skill that I have not at all mastered. We had a VW Square back and it was really fun to drive, even though it was goofy looking. I love those cars. I wish VW Beatles were still around. They were the easiest thing to convert into a dune buggy. We, um, here in California, we do that with old trucks. And, like, I'm still looking for an old Mitsubishi truck because those are the perfect trucks to Baja because they're tiny. You can roll them, and I could drag it out with my bigger truck. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely can't juggle nor court. You're not alone. You're not alone, Liz. That is. <laughs> I know I could get my golden balls out and we could all laugh at me. <laughs> I'm, I haven't laughed enough at myself today. So we could laugh at me tr trying to juggle. I have these, I have these weird practice. Um, they're, it's for hockey, but they're balls. They're, but they yeah. like have these reflective surface on them. I try to juggle all the time and I cannot do it. I could not do it. Hey, Commander, are you back? I think I, I thought I heard a yes, but your yep. audio is. Oh, okay. oh, there you are. <laughs> well, my microphone was on the other side of the desk. I need to get one of those things that hold it in front of you so that you don't have to hold it. Oh, yeah. I oh, like a, and... a tripod? <laughs> oh, no. I mean, like a boom. Because I do have the tripod. It's just that my desk <laughs> is not very um, well. We'll just say it would be better. Right. Oh, <laughs> right. Not very like big. Different types of mics that some like focus because this is actually the mic that's supposed to go for my camera. 
but I the magic of an SD sound card or an external sound card. This microphone is meant to be um, in a in a soundproof room. But it's I'm just so a loud cute. Okay. I love people's cute mics, except for those blue Yetis that are just like you can have a fancy mic and you still sound like crap. I have so an glad. Audio Technica 2020. I need to buy a new um a new microphone for my camera, but I'm really weary because it's a Canon. And for the for some reason, like it's incompatible with every microphone I've ever come across. I run it old school. That's why you see me standing with my old school microphone. I I run I have an ancient. Oh my god! I have a DSLR. What is it? A Rebel One, and I run it off. I use my Rode Micro. Is my mic like ancient tiny stuff? <laughs> Do you know what's funny, Alibaba? In my um, in my walk-in closet, it's weirdly um, it's silent in there because I have stuff on the ceiling. I have stuff like I'll do a, a what's her name, Patricia? I can't say her name. It's dyslexia. Patricia Patat Patatus Patatus. She's really famous. She's on the H1N1 podcast all the time. Oh, Isaiah Trisha Paytas. No, Paytas. she's not on there anymore. She got kicked <laughs> off. But her husband is um, What's-His-Face's wife's brother, Trisha Paytas. So this room isn't soundproof, but my closet is soundproof. It's so eerie. I go in there and read. That's why I put the chair in there. <laughs> It's weirdly peaceful in there. I love my closet. I I I kick it in my closet. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um she like there's this old um YouTube trope before, you know, when she got famous just for being like, you know, at her house. Whenever she would like it was a controversy or she was about to ruin people's lives, she would sit on the floor. Right. Do you think she sits on the floor with her baby Barbie? I am so glad that she exists because I dated a woman like her. And that's a telltale sign of like, <laughs> she actually reminds me of the woman I dated. Uh, she, she's actually a great person, but literally is, is I can't say her name. Trisha Paytas. Trisha Paytas in real life. I want to call her Patatas, but it's because <laughs> I look at her last name and that's how it that's how it phonetically comes out. <laughs> patatas, patatas. Patatas, patatas. <laughs> but one day, if so, if you ever see me sitting on the floor in a video, I'm about to um I'm about to say something crazy. That's what right, I'm gonna, or you're gonna have a mukbang and start to cry. I okay. Let's go full circle now that people are here. <laughs> right? Let's go full circle. When I first started this stream, Commander, how do you feel about people who um, waste food on YouTube? Who, like, will make 15-pound nachos on their table or, or like, uh, boil a steak in a... I watched someone boil a steak in a coffee maker. Well, boiling a steak is the first crime. Sorry, I'm interrupting. Oh. Because that's yeah, <laughs> steak is meant to be either put on a grill or put on a grill or a cast iron. Yeah, well, that's what I meant. Okay, just clarifying. Um, the mukbang thing, people destroy themselves for their popularity. You mean Nick Avocado I'm... Avocado? <laughs> Nick Avocado makes me want to cry. He was my size before he found YouTube. I know. He was so healthy and like cute, and now he's a slob. Are you choking or laughing? <laughs> I can't. Or did you burn yourself? <laughs> all three. Um, uh, D? <laughs> all, okay, of all of the above. <laughs> I'm plugging in my I'm plugging in my sewing machine because I um you know I, I love streaming so I'd rather pay attention to the stream than sew because 
when I'm in here by myself, I'm like watching television on my soon to be illegal VPN. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Okay, so let's do a quick shout out. Please contact your senators, your house representatives, tell them S686 is a bunch of pile of bull crappy shit, canary shitness. I'm sorry for all the swearing. It makes me mad. Even if you get a stupid response of, how does this affect your healthcare or the logging industry? I'm like, no, just once a week, email them. Or if you have the cojones, call them because it counts for what, like 10,000 constituents in your area, the Restrict Act and S-686 needs to die and not go any farther. Is that that stupid thing where they want to ban um, uh, it's the being, it's the anti TikTok bill is how it's being touted in the mainstream media, but it's way worse than that. And it is basically, oh, what's the one from after 9 11 that's. Oh, Patriot that Act. was the Patriot Act. Yeah, Nancy it's the Patriot Act 3.0 of bullshit. Give you an idea. Sh- Nancy Pelosi said that she wouldn't trust herself. With the true powers of the Patriot Act, I look, Alibaba. You made you. I am dying with this. I know you don't have house of rep. You don't have a local house representative. <laughs> no, but you have your own thing because you've got your version that C eleven that's still trying to get touted. That's equally stupid and horrible. I so just yes, think- all your MP and no no C eleven and no S six eight six. I just think it's weird and, that they want to put me in jail because I want to watch Ru, RuPaul's Drag Race in Sweden. I don't speak the language, but I just like watching it. I want to watch the Great <laughs> British Sewing Bee season six. <laughs> yeah, or like, um, um, I, I started watching a show, um, Friday Night Dinner. I love that show. It's a show uh, about a family that comes together. It's it's about a Jewish family that comes together every Friday night for dinner. It's a hilarious show, but it's not an American show. So am I going to go to jail for watching that show? Yeah, for 20 I have a... years, you get fined a million dollars. <laughs> Do you know what the tax on a million dollars is? It's a, it's a million and a half dollar. <laughs> Let's not talk about the IRS. I hate this is the yeah, time I owe them about two thousand bucks, but I'm would, getting like fifteen hundred from Virginia back, so it's not as bad. This is definitely that time of year where I gripe about. Um, I miss the days of being a feral human. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. Yep. The, um, the California state tax is what breaks me because <laughs> I don't have. I don't, I don't, um, I went from like being impoverished to being middle class and they, and anything they tax me on, I'm like, what? Why are they taxing me? <laughs> There's a 33% self-employment tax. Like my family came here to live the American dream and you become a small business owner and they're like, and I'm going to kick you in the balls two ways to Tuesday. I have to go check on Mr. Sewing just to make sure that's Call of Duty and not and not his girlfriend. Okay. Ooh, butterfly. I I know I need but you can't. I watched the old seasons, but there's no way to get the new seasons unless you've got a VPN. I I've tried for like two years now. I'm super disappointed. But we have a corset that has eyelets. Oh, my lighting is like blowing this out. We'll see if we can show up the inside. There's boning, the gray is the boning channels. The taupe is the waist phase. And before I got on, I punched all of these eyelets because putting in eyelets live scares the bejesus out of me. So I did it in my, where I could cry by myself that a couple of them flubbed themselves up. What do you have to say, Miss Commander? Um, hopefully that those were A five hundred. That was the first um, progressive die that they let me decide how to fix it. 
And believe it or not, the islets at the time were being sold in America. They used to work for a company that made islets and grommets, and they used to own Wicks a million. Sweet. It's got a cute punch because the handheld one is stupid, but I have to sit on the floor to get enough leverage because if I'm at the table, the eyelets don't punch through as nicely as I would like them to. He was um, screaming at, at Call of Duty and he made cupcakes. Sweet. So that there's nothing better to a poor kid's heart than cupcakes and shooting the shit out of things in Call of Duty. <laughs> Yeah, but like knowing um you're you're gonna be pro cupcakes when I tell you what the actual ingredients are. They're like fun free cupcakes. There's nothing wrong. No <laughs> calories, no problem. That's, you gotta look svelte. I'm not a Mc, McMuffin is my term for habitises that I don't want to embody right now, so I'm not a McMuffin. <laughs> And he looked at me crazy at the store when he bought, he grabbed the box of, to, you know, of, of cake mix. And I was like, cool, let's get frosting. And he was like, we don't need frosting. I said, yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we need frosting. <laughs> no, you just need margarine and Nestle quick powder. <laughs> he is so healthy. Sometimes I swear he's, uh, he's an alien. Like, I'm living with Alf. I've been watching Alf lately because I'm so tuned out of the world, of everything that's been going on. I've just decided, like, if if it's all going to go to hell in a handbasket, I'm going to be at my house sewing and watching Alf. <laughs> no. Hey, I've got a light in the darkness. Guess who is thrown in their bid? I hope it's not a meme, but for me, for the presidential candidate for 2024. Who's that? Afro man. It's got my vote. <laughs> <laughs> He's forced. I thought you were going to say some obscure politician I've never heard of. Nope. Nope. Good old Afro man. Do you know what worse? Our country is so trashed right now. He might win. <laughs> I know. And I think he's his. Oh, let me see if I can pull this up of oh, his platform. It was, oh, it was so good. Can I be his vice president just so when we win, I could be like, you did it, Afro man. You did it. <laughs> no, we did it. Sorry, I'm trying to, I'm trying to quote Camilla Harris. We did it, Afro man. We did it. <laughs> oh, it was so good. I recently Lizzie saw they had an official campaign in the 1970s and the guy from Mad Magazine what's his name Alfred they actually Newman. had to they had to stop running him because he had the opportunity to fuck everything up <laughs> Oh I'm here can I take a second and read his whole Let me let me read this real fast yeah. This is from OG Afro Man. Is this? Oh, his Instagram. My fellow Americans, there comes a time in the course of human events when change must be affected. That time is now. Americans are suffering and the status quo is no longer acceptable. Inflation is out of control. The economy is in shambles. The housing market is staggering. Politicians are corrupt bad apples are allowed to remain in law enforcement amongst our noble and brave officers medicinal plants are criminalized while pharmaceutical companies enrich themselves on chemicals with unknown side effects the media sows the seeds of hatred 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days per year the attempt to divide based on, based on race religion, gender, sexual preference, and every other category they can think of. We need a candidate that is truly elected by the people and for the people. Whoa, whoa. We need a man that can step up and lead with a firm hand. The people are starved for a commander in chief that leads from a place of love and not hate. In these dark times, we need a leader that truly embodies America. My candidate is the American dream. Who better to lead in criminal justice, justice reform 
than a man who has traveled through the complete metamorphosis of the ju of the justice system, a man who entered juvenile hall as a tadpole and hopped out of prison as a bullfrog, ooh, and is still the American dream, the most rejected, disrespected. When he went from for a job, he was never selected and is still the American dream, the acceptable re reject. The original hungry hustler, a representative of the blue state of California and the red state of, Minnesota, of Mississippi, our cannabis commander in chief, our pothead of state, who better to hold the highest office in the land than the highest and flyest player in the game. He is for black men, Max, black man, Mexican, even poor white all human beings that have no rights. So put down your past and pick up your future. It is my immense honor and pleasure to formally announce my formally announce Afro man as an independent candidate for the president of the United States of America. I think you just won my vote, Mr. Afro man. I hope he doesn't fuck up the um, next election and give it to Trump. He, he, uh, Political chicanery. Trump is like the Republican nominee, and it's going to be a fight to the death between him and Biden. It's going to be a question of who dies first. I, I man, where's Ralph Nader when you need him? I, it's after man. We do. I we know. have it. That's it's just different. It totally made me think of Ralph Nader because. Plucky young kids such as myself voted for Ralph Nader and gave the election to um, George Bush. I voted for Ralph Nader in uh, 1999. Well, I mean. you were in California, so your vote didn't affect anything. But if you were in like Florida, <laughs> the penis of America, so then um, it shaped like what the state is. So. I agree with you. That's what everyone tells me. They're like, oh, you live in California. Afro Man, his song is hilarious. But it's sad, yeah. though, because like in America, our, some of our cops, they, they don't even know what the law is anymore. And they've become the very dictators that, they, that they've sworn to um, not you know, protect us from. Yep. A little power gave those little guys little PP energy, big, big schlong energy, and... Yeah, that lawsuit, I hope it also burns in hell. Like in my state, the cops would be held accountable. You can't not just... It's funny because you could be standing on your property and the cops will not come on your property because they know they will be held um, liable. It's it's actually... I've seen... I, I live in California, though. We're, we're still protected citizens here. You have the right to tell a cop how you feel <laughs> and not go to jail for it. As long as you say, in my opinion, I think you're a piece of fill in the blank. <laughs> Respect my authority. And then they, they turn into Cartman. There is a cop out here that went viral in my hometown during um, the lockdowns. The cops were beating up people if you were out after curfew. It was bad. And this one cop, two guys were in their car. They got pulled over. And this cop um, was basically like, I'm going to mace you. And the guy was like, go ahead. And he's like, oh, just wait until my buddies get here. And he went to mace him and his can was empty. <laughs> F you, Moco. I, I, I look. I look around. I want, I want to see that guy. Because... Where, where they uh, where all that happened is on the next exit from my house, so I know he <laughs> and and you know they push dirty cops around like Catholic priests, so he couldn't have gone that far. I know he's still around here somewhere, I know he's still around here. <laughs> and the cops are starting to run into that too, where they'll charge someone, and the DA is like, This isn't even a charge. <laughs> I, I don't know. What solution do we have that we um that we can stop being scared of each other, or are we on like, on the the train to nowhere? At least in America, how can we stop being so scared of each other that because what happens with fear 
as you're scared of something. So as humans, we either try to kill it, excommunicate it, or, you know, there, there's certain things that people do. We have to wait till the baby boomers drop dead. One of the things, and I hate to say this, one of the things why they're going nuts, and it's even the like younger folks go nuts sometimes, the older folks, I just looked at this lady um, and I said, the reason why you're voting for Trump is because your kids don't have your racism and you're afraid your grandchildren won't look like you. I've seen it before. And I said, just be honest. And she said, yeah. And I think that's why they're freaking out. But do you think it's because of the propaganda? Like, I consider both sides very much propaganda. My Like, my mom still watches MSNBC, and it's very skewed. Just, just for the fact of science, I'll put it on Fox News. I can't watch it for 10 minutes. I can't even take it. And, um, Mark, your cops sound like ours. Cops just don't know the law here either, but they're allowed to just do whatever. <laughs> the cops literally make stuff up. And the, to the point where the DA has told the cops, like, you guys have to actually charge them with something that we could, like, you know, it has to be a real charge, not, like, made up. <laughs> you, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I'm glad you did. But it's a certain generation of police officers that have, like, you can't emotionally just arrest somebody. Because in America, you have the right to tell someone that they're a piece of fill in the blank. You do. Right. The First Amendment <laughs> needs to be protected. That's I can't believe this whole political <laughs> theater that's going to happen with Trump. Like, love him or hate him. I know it's he's polarizing. But the statute of limitations is run out on these things. And the New York State is trying to be pull off federal law that doesn't apply to them this is all show and it's gonna galvanize his fan base and what they're trying to do they're trying to charge him with a felony because um you can't run for president if you're a felon no you can run from, from you can run from president from jail it's already happened the guy who was a socialist from like the 20s or 30s you can be in jail and run for president that's a lie oh, i'm gonna have Man, gay Twitter has let me down. Black YouTube. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I hope so. I hope he can. I, you know, the, the thing is, um, I think he's going to lose. I truly think that that he's going to lose. But that's just that's my um, because I thought he was going to win a, um, a second term. Tell you the honest truth, even with everything that was going on, because he had such a hardcore base, he only has half of that now. I the things that they are doing to him, it's rallying his fan base. Like I agree with you before. It's but seventy five million people voted for him, and eighty people voted not eighty million voted not for him. You know, or or whatever the numbers are. I and know, but how away, much of the Armenian mafia who like sold bases and San or er, sold ballots from San Bernardino County. They also busted a bunch of people in Michigan that were doing the same thing for Trump, though. And that's another yeah. thing: election fraud happens all the time in my town. Um, when all the ballots were that was that was dystopian. When they were literally taking away post like postal boxes, and they have not returned. None of our postal boxes have returned, but we we had um, ballot drop in centers and people were making fake ballot um, drop boxes to try to get the <laughs> to try to basically stop people from voting. Yeah. Yes. But yes. Also, it was folks who were putting in ballots from folks at senior living facilities and congreg congregate care facilities who weren't capable of voting, but who were registered and had a vote, like folks were nefariously voting. You know, what's really funny. Like at my job, if somebody um, isn't in the position to vote, they do not. And we tell the county, like this person is incapacitated. Thank you for your consideration. And that's way above board more than a lot of places. And well, the thing they... is, the only people to be charged and convicted 
of election fraud for 2020 have been Trumpers. That's my whole point. That's my whole point. And I'm sure, but, you know, I am the guy that thinks the census is a lie. I, you know, so I think election fraud being rampant isn't too, um, isn't too far away from the truth. Because in America, we tell um, senseless lies to each other all the time. Yeah. Well, that's part of the um, division. Let's see. What I've else got they some. Are. I've got some video of Glenn Beck, the Mormon prophet. The first time I ever learned that I was a Nazi communist was when Glenn Beck, the Mormon prophet, went on there and said. If you hear your preacher talking about two words, social justice or economic justice, those are bywords for communism and Nazism. And Glenn, um, But they're is, in the Bible. He's Glenn a Mormon. Beck, I had no idea. That makes a lot of sense. That's why that makes a lot of sense. That actually fits but the But I had that nickname. I had that nickname for him, Glenn Beck, the Mormon prophet from way back in like 2008. Because he was reporting you... what the voices in his head were telling him as actual news on Fox. Oh, my gosh. He's crazy. Living in a um, having grown up in a Mormon area like he kind of fits the profile in a weird way. Extremely arrogant, way too sure of himself. Couldn't couldn't punch his way out of a wet paper bag unless he had unless he had fifteen people behind him. I a lot of those newscasters in general, like I watched Ra Rachel Maddow for years. I can't watch her anymore. Like a lot of them in general have just um, have kind of let me down. And I don't have a personal problem with Rachel Maddow. I just can't watch it anymore. Um, I don't watch. A lot of network news and that's just because anxiety I actually think enough about the situation and how close we are to um, yeah. I have to find uh, like a tactful way of playing you know some way of writing in Trump's latest speeches about um withdrawing from nato and um so what uh, i do getting our intelligence services and like right now um i'm trying to like i am um, in the process of learning a third language i watch all kinds of stuff that's outside of my box i avoid it at all costs because I live in a strike zone <laughs> where if something crazy did happen, I would literally just have to put my head between my legs. So I kind of look at it like, like, you know, like I say this every week now at this point, it's like the life of Brian. We're all on a cross, you know? <laughs> That's kind of how I look at it. Like we're all there already, you know, got to look on the bright side. I um, I've gone back to watching Prunella Scales and John Ranley Holder and like just old movies and and like just like Herbie the Love Bug at two thirty in the morning. <laughs> My you favorite know. Herbie movie was Herbie Rides Again, where all oh. the Herbies gang up on Alonzo yeah. Hall. Every Love Bug <laughs> in the area. Those um, I was a really sick kid. Um, I have a low immune system. I'll catch anything anyone has. So I was home a lot. I those those movies remind me of Saturday afternoons. I love those movies. They were always on TV. That and Pippi Longstocking, which by today's standards is kind of creepy, but I've seen every single episode. <laughs> I the thought of a feral human intrigued me as a child. Pippi Longstocking was a feral human. <laughs> Speaking of old authors, I'm so glad that Judy Bloom is standing up against the horrible rewriting of the old Roald Dahl books. 
I think at a certain point we like. Okay, I am in love with John Wayne. He would not have hung out with me. We have very different views, but I'm okay with that. I grew up watching the man, you know. His politics were not necessarily my politics, but he passed a long time ago. Yep. And as somebody who is a direct descendant of slaves, I have a policy of not digging up bones to yell at them. There, are, You can be mad at the policy. You can be mad at, at the ideal. You, but the person is long gone, you know? I completely agree. And there's some... Like Shakespeare, we're not rewriting Shakespeare. There's some, it, <laughs> we can't have critical discourse unless we have the original text to to complain about. I loved Pippi Longstocking, Elizabeth, and thanks, Ali Baba. John Wayne was my hero. <laughs> I ride horses, and I I bought a Marlin just because I wanted to be just like him. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but my whole There's point some- is. Oh, go ahead, please. please. No, no, finish what you're going to say and then I'll go. I just, I sometimes I try to decipher between my my own personal politics, what is entertainment and what's going on in my life right in front of my face. Because there are certain things like the guy stealing the water up the creek. That's more important than even the presidential election right now to me. You know? Yep, your local school board, city council, that's where we make real change these days. <clears throat> that is one thing about John Wayne. And he did um, preserve my whole area, like out in the mountains and the hills and the desert. You literally cannot build out there um, because of John Wayne. So he was weirdly an environmentalist because he filmed in all these, like, these places. Burbank, if you ever watch any of those old movies, those old Western movies, those are the hills of Burbank, California. <laughs> He went out to Utah into a area that had a lot of fallout. He was going out there with the nuclear tests. Oh, wow. John Wayne was? Yeah. But it turned out, statistically speaking, there there was like an article in the 80s did nuclear tests kill John Wayne? And it looks like about half the staff got cancer. But when you look at um, death statistics, it turned out that most of the people smoked and um, the cancer rate for the, the crew was actually just without nuclear fallout. That's crazy because um, there are uninhabitable places in the desert in the southwest. You can actually look it up. It's a really cool map to show where they dropped nukes. And there are certain cities where people live where they drop nukes. I'm looking at you, Arizona. <laughs> you don't need nukes. You could just go to the West Fall or the West Valley nuclear plant where they buried it in 50 gallon drums and cardboard boxes that are disintegrating into the Great Lakes. Oh, that's crazy. Be care- be careful, Liz. Be careful. That makes me so angry. Nobody thought, like, hey, um, we're going to completely screw over the future generation. Like, no one I, thought... I ham- better, that, that was... 50-gallon drums was the highest level of, t- of technology they had. And the Hanford site in Washington State, it's basically the shittiest nuclear site outside of the sh- even shittier Russian sites. Oh, I know. I had a friend who worked there for a while with the uranium. <laughs> it's like San Onofre. San Onofre was within a two-hour drive of my house. They announced years ago, they're like, oh, we had a leak in the reactor that was leaking in the ocean for nine months. They're like, what? They're like, oh, but we fixed it. Like, what? What? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> it's better. And um, just as a cautionary tale, if you ever come to Los Angeles, if you go to Santa Monica Beach, Venice Beach, Doc Weiler Beach, where the planes go overhead, okay? It's, it's literally at the end of the runway 
of LAX. It's beautiful. It's picturesque. It's it's amazing, especially when the planes are flying overhead. But there is one of the largest rendering plants on the West Coast that dumps a lot of its um, byproducts into the ocean. So that just and means so it stinks. Because uh, you mean like animal, you're like the glue, f Elmer's glue factory renders their horse hooves there from the horse ranch <laughs> that sells off their dead animals. It's the, it's the rendering for all the waste of that side of the city, but it's the largest because the concentration of the people live on that side of the city. Most people live on the North side of Los Angeles. That's why the West side is so coveted. It's gross. It's gross. But people but literally. Are... That that's... <laughs> oh, let's make you big. Make you huge. Yay. Oh, oh, I'm standing in front of my white. I have to put in the lacing strips, but oh, she's a beauty. My 1906 Camille riding corset. Wow. Thank you, Alibaba, for letting me know that the pattern was discontinued and I found it on Reddit. Oh, I love it. I don't even need to hit pad because I'm fat enough in just the right places. <laughs> no, it looks great. It looks great. I love that moment. I love that moment when you put it on and you're like, it's all coming together. Like I know. <laughs> it, she, there's some finishing. There's always finishing touches on a corset that we're like, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. But I think I just need to put the laces in and tie her up and put her on for realsies. But Loki is sleeping on my laces right now. Yeah, butterfly loves it. Thank you. Alibaba, um, I, 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 um, please tell me what that channel's name is because I think it, I will like share that guy's channel because people don't realize what Los Angeles is doing to the ocean. <laughs> It looks great. Your course, it looks great. Thank you. Oh, hearts and hearts and hearts for all. <laughs> it, it with my Wonder Woman T-shirt from my my sweet mother-in-law. So still have to do a first fit. No, this is the second version because the other one was too big. So I, this is the second, and I think I might actually have a two-inch lacing gap. And if I recomp a little bit more, she's going to be too big. But I can deal with the corset that's too big, but too small is, well, you just put a modesty panel in the back. <laughs> there was an experimental sodium reactor at LA where they disposed of old sodium, but putting it in drums and throwing them in on-site dam and shooting the drums so they'd, ex yep, that's LA, so they'd explode. So they'd explode. Yeah, we're gross here. And there's like 15 million people that live in one space at one time. You mean NAC, right? Are you talking about what kind of reactor? Nuclear reactor or... Because NAC is used as... That would be potassium sodium alloy, which is liquid at room temperature, is used in nuclear reactors on ships because for the cooling purposes that's a good point and one of the worst things we there's buried I, I've said this a million times there's buried trash everywhere here to the point where like we have uh, methane warnings in the hill by, by my job like when you buy ground rights to anything they tell you oh okay you can you can dig but we don't want to be near it for when you explode <laughs> Right. We catch your torso in a different county somewhere. And you might start a forest fire that burns yeah. three counties over and sends smoke my way. Please don't. I recently... Did you ever think of trying to harness the methane in the hills above you or near you? There's um, 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 lots of people have tried. Lots of people have exploded. Um, I have to poke holes with the, with the tractor in the hills to alleviate the pressure that like i like so no not necessarily the problem the problem is is that like um 
I was always taught like be environmental, but don't destroy the property. In in California, if you find anything that's like um, Native American or an old burial site or something that used to be considered that was considered where people live the city or the state comes in and takes eminent domain over your um, property. So because just pretend you find it, just pretend it doesn't exist. My father literally like, like I, we, we always do a Creek check because there's this road that, um, that runs through in front of the entire property. People throw out the strangest things and People always throw out their drugs when the cops are behind them <laughs> or in front of them. <laughs> I've found all kinds of crazy stuff. But my dad would always tell me, like, if you ever find an arrowhead, don't tell a soul. <laughs> you, you find a headdress, you leave it there. <laughs> but he was basically just telling me, like, they will claim eminent domain on our property. And I always thought it was an old wives tale. Until recently, there was a man who literally lived on an island. His house was at the bottom of a hill. He had a beautiful property. And over a pipe dispute, he refused to repipe his house. So the city said, oh, it's not up to code. Eminent domain. We're taking your entire land. And okay, the house is junky, whatever. But the guy's family has owned it as long as I can remember. And it's not okay. Like, I don't know. So our our it's crazy here. If you mess with the city, they'll literally claim eminent domain, even if you own your own property and take it from you. As far as I'm concerned, the only time eminent domain is okay is like to build a school or a road. Other than that, fuck off. They um there was a child, well, I call it, there was a juvenile hall, which for people who don't know, that's a kid's prison, basically, that went out of business. The, um, the state of California came in and like, oh, this is state property. We're going to put a maximum security prison here. Well, there's codes where you can't because there's houses literally across the street. It's different when it's a juvenile detention center than when you're going to have you know, Jeffrey Dahmer. Axe murderers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real ones, you know. Or you do go. <laughs> so we're fighting the city right now so they don't put a, a maximum prison over by the ranch. So if you see me on the news with my real name, <laughs> it doesn't match me either. <laughs> But we're fighting the city right now because they're trying to put in a maximum um, security prison. And it's within walking distance of a high school, too. Oh, isn't because that beautiful? It's, like, convenient. Like, where my job is, it's, like, the beginning of the middle of nowhere. But a five-minute drive... Well, no, a 10-minute drive of the road, it takes you back into the city. So where the property sits, it's out in the middle of nowhere, but it opens up into the city. And this particular camp sits in between that road. And they're trying to bring, um, I don't know, I just, it's, uh, there's nothing but houses around it. I thought they had laws against that. <laughs> it seems stupid because, like, I was driving past a prison, and there's signs on the road no stopping except for emergencies area under surveillance and if they got that for just driving by one on a highway what the hell are they going to do when not if but when someone gets through the fence and um, there's a I don't, know, I don't know if it's a minimum, maximum. There's a prison on the five, shocker, by my house as well. And people break out from that all the time. All the time people break out from that. Especially from the work crews. There's a restriction for a reason. They have laws, but they can have emissions and do it. Yes. Yeah, that's the problem. Enough safety stuff. Yeah. It is insane. It's insane. We're fighting them. But like the weird thing is, is that the city is still trying to go through with it. And the people are like, you guys, like, don't you some of you guys live around here? 
could you um could you live near a maximum security prison? I did um, a few hours of one, so um been there, done that. When was it built? Because I'd oh. feel more comfortable with a modern one than um one oh, that's shit. Um, no, this is old from the seventies. I was about to say the one um, by my house is from the seventies. This entire neighborhood is um, everything is nineteen seventy eight. Like everything around here was built in nineteen seventy eight. It's so older than we are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so I know for a fact that that prison uh, was built in that exact same uh, year, but it was. It's just sad. It's just sad that they're like, um, commercialization has destroyed my town. They built, I live in the rinky, what used to be a rinky dink town. They built a stadium big enough where I've seen Willie Nelson. Basically, like, I've seen um, Los Lobos, <laughs> a bunch of Spanish bands that are actually really famous, but they perform in my town because they have this giant stadium. Because I live in a yuppie town that's ran by corporations, which used to be literally a cow town. But now we have um, an amusement park and it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy what they're doing. An old secure property could be upgraded to maximum security with some omissions. Yes, they did that here. And I, I don't have a problem with that. But the problem is like that one guy slips through, okay? Then they say all his crimes on the news, and you're like, I don't want this guy in my house. Sorry, we have like 50 mile an hour wind, so it's tripping me out. I know, I heard something <laughs> creepy going on. When I finished streaming yesterday, I looked outside. There was snow. There's a snow warning till tomorrow. It is April. I've never lived in this town and had snow in April in 12 years. I, I that was a great show. Los Lobos was a great show. I honestly, I'm not a music snob. I'm into like heavy metal, black metal, dark metal, but I'll go see anything. If you can play, I'll go watch you. I've said this before. When I went and saw Weezer a long time ago, Jimmy Eat World, Jimmy Eat World and Tenacious D performed. I was so shocked how well put together Jimmy Eat World was. I saw them three times after that. They know how to play. They 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 play. They're not just like MTV show musicians. Like they can really play. I am a teenage dirt bad baby. <laughs> but basically, in my town, um, it's a big issue, and it's the same town where we've re we recently had a school shooting. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near a prison when you have someone with nothing but time. Exactly. Someone's going to figure out the weak points and escape. Exactly. And my job or, house, houses 108 vulnerable human beings. Or you, you fall, in, you get some sappy human to be like, I will woo you and you will let me escape with my friend as we bury tunnels. Please tell me that you followed um, Vicky. Um, oh, what was her name? I know Vicky, this is from a case a couple years ago. I think it was New Vicky York. White. Vicky White. Vicky White. Vicky. She was in Mrs. No, she. they were in the South. And she fell in love with the prisoner who had the same. Casey White had the same last name. as. Oh. as and they um, she broke him out of prison. Yep. Oh, yes. Yep. Yep. That I yeah, I followed that whole thing every day. I'm still subscribed to the um the news, all the news channels. It was just so intriguing to me, and I agree with I, you, Mark. I couldn't live near a prison. I know. Now we've got the Lori Daybell, the the Lori Vallow Daybell case happening. That trial just started today. Who's she? Is she? Oh, <laughs> okay. oh, this is okay. Um. She is on, has been incarcerated for a note since the panorama. I can't remember. It's been a, a hot minute for offing her, her 
two developmentally disabled kids and then continuing to collect their social security. She's guilty. I don't care what she did. She's guilty. (laughs) And may have offed another husband and her husband at the time may have offed his previous wife. They're weird. This weird Mormon, fundamentally Mormon in, uh, uh, is it Idaho? I think they're in Idaho. It's this case has been going on forever. She keeps trying to claim like insanity and wanting competent competency hearings. And I'm like, you would rather be in jail than in a state psych facility. Like you, you don't want to be found incompetent. That's you don't want to go that route. Are they that bad? Oh yes. And his, the, the husband's, because it's Lori Vallow Daybell and Chad Daybell, and his Mormon romance stories are a hot piece of trash. Um, one of the reasons why going to a state mental facility rather than a prison is worse is in order to be found um, not guilty by reason of insanity you need to not understand that you've done something wrong. And can you imagine being locked up? You know, like in prison, you're locked up with people who know they're doing something wrong. Yeah. Versus locked up with people who have no fucking idea that um, raping or connecting you to an electrical socket is bad. Right. And there's a time limit. Like in jail, even if you're, it's life in prison, there's an end date. A state hospital, there's no end date. You're there forever. Hold on. So they can keep you for less a life sentence then? Basically. And you're outside of the no legal way. jurisdictional system if you're in a state hospital. Like that. So some board. Literally are. That's not the right plan. Not that I'm not a lawyer. So a board is in charge of you and, and not like it's just a bunch of people who are like, well, we'll keep you another five years. Exactly. Right. And you, the taxpayers Ooh. fund your room and board and well, they do that regardless of your sitch, but. Have a great night, Butterfly. Thank you for coming by. I'm going to have my uh, Godless Sewing and the Technicolor Coat video out soon. <laughs> I could not imagine because I hear a lot of people claiming um, insanity or, you know, claiming things to stay out of prison because prison is big business here in California. Yeah, that they privatize the prison system is a whole other can of... It's a disgusting can of worms. They will take... um, Nonviolent offenders put them in with axe murderers in the hopes that they make axe murderers when the nonviolent offenders get out. They don't know yeah. how to deal with the general population anymore. Exactly. Like here in California, um, we used to segregate um, prisoners by race, by drug, by by um, sexuality. And um, some court deemed that illegal. So now you have people preying on each other. Like I, I am anti putting people in in jail because they're on a bunch of drugs. Okay, that's just that's just me. That's the hippie in me. But could you imagine some guy, some vulnerable dude, shaking in a cell with a predator? And a predator isn't someone who's going like a predator could be. That's an encompassing term. A predator could be all kinds of things, you know? It's awful. It's awful what the justice system has happened to here in California. And in 2022, um, California quietly legalized slavery. Right, with letting the prisoners, like, and you're going to stamp license plates for 12 cents an hour. Well, they had to justify... Which is even worse, that's dangerous. And we pay hazard they, pay for that. That's a skilled... Forest fighting firefighters is a skilled trade. We pay our firefighters well here in California, and they we send them around the world. You know, they get paid. Yeah, they get the training. My state. 
<laughs> exactly. I know. I um, have a friend who's a firefighter. He's been to Australia three times. He's been to Oregon more times than me, and I used to live there. <laughs> you know, like, um, it's slavery. We have an army of fire jumpers here in California that are prisoners. And in 2022, they basically, they were like, tra not trying to unionize, but they were like, hey, this is against the Geneva Convention. So they they made a law. They're like, okay, we can legally do whatever we want to them. And the only reason it stuck with me so much, I need to find out where this young lady was from. But there was some young kid who got elected from some town in California somewhere. And she was screaming on the floor. You can watch it on YouTube. She's like, do you realize we just legalized slavery in California? And she's crying. And everyone's just walking out. <laughs> but if you live in California, in San Francisco, you can get your like $7.5 million for... You know what's so funny? If, that is, if that's true, I got papers. Say, right, you, you need to move up north. Million, if you gave me $7 million, I would die with like six and a half. <laughs> and a bunch of really cool sewing machines. <laughs> I know, right? I, I that that you're trying to get me canceled. You're trying to get me canceled, Phoenix. There no, I'm not. No, sorry, we are not. No, no, no. I'm here okay. for all my friends. No canceling. <laughs> there are some YouTubers who do not like me because I did not tow the company line, and so it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um. I'm going to bring something up. Okay. As far as prisoners go, there was a now the organization that has since sprouted forth from the original organization is a piece of shit. But there was a mm -hmm. prison ministry where the secular stuff was paid for by the taxpayer and religion was completely optional. But what they did was they trained people who were going to re-enter society how to solve problems in the manner in which you solve problems outside of a prison. Mm -hmm. And the um, recidivism rate of people who did not go through this program was 80%. But the um, people who went through the program... It was 20%. Mm. And they set people up with jobs once they left, which is a huge thing because once you have a record, you getting a job is kind of like not good prospects. But we when you do, uh, when you oh, no, set no. out to reform people, you can probably do it. I think re re um, reforming. Reforming people is possible. All that money that they pump into the fire jumpers, that they pump into these programs, if they gave people jobs, like you said, if they set them up in real halfway houses, it would work. But um, <laughs> I miss my dad so much. He, he would hire... My dad was a second chance employer. He loved um, somebody that came with a bad story. And he never got screwed over. But he hired this company called Bible Tabernacle. And I just had to say it slow because I just can't pronounce it properly. But long story short, they would get... It was a work release program. Um, it was a work release program where they would let people out of jail and they would join this ministry. But... Uh, my dad would jokingly call it white slavery because they would, they couldn't leave the compound. They couldn't, um, and you know, they couldn't do anything and they would come and work and cut our fields. They would do clear cutting um, for fire season and we would pay this company, but it was, it was slavery, you know? And these guys wouldn't, they were basically subject to this place and they had to go to church and, it was so bad that I went up to the compound and my predecessor was, he was a cocky human being and I am cocky, but to a certain extent, we got up there. I looked around. I said, you stand right next to me. <laughs> Cause if I wander off, <laughs> they're, they're gonna freak it. it was the scariest place I've ever been in my life. It was a real compound, you know? 
So a lot of these work release programs are just nothing but a front for people to make a ton of money and hold people hostage. Yeah, that's the problem. And we used to call them reformatories and penitentiaries for a reason. And then in the 1970s, the Christian fundamentalists said, we're not doing that anymore. Now it's just punishment. So the initial reason for our prison system has gotten lost. But only on the people who claim to be religious. Do you think there's a way to reform the prison system? Because like here in California, it's lost. Like, Yeah, don't make it a private corporate Exactly. I, yes, I, yes, I, yes. One quick thing to Alibaba. I do agree. I'm not laced up in the, I only have, la oh, Brunhilda's in the front. I'm not laced <laughs> in the bottom, so I might need some hip padding, but I think if I was, I can't see. I don't have ties in the back, in the lower section, so I'll have to see how much of a hip padding I need. It might fit better if it was tied and i'm only tied halfway right now i'm too short for my camera but oh this riding corset i love her that's awesome i think if she was tied and i probably don't need that much but i don't have i'm not laced up all the way so i think that's the problem but i concur with all of your suggestions <laughs> <laughs> do you think uh, oh sorry go ahead I was just, you know, when you get done, you're like, I just need to try it on, even if it's not quite right. But I have to try it on and see if it looks cute. <laughs> Phoenix, that is me. If you ever see me wearing a coat without the buttons, it's because I fell in love with it. And I'm like, nope, I don't care. I don't need the buttons. I'm filming it with, I do it all the time. I still haven't added buttons on my red coat. And I've worn it almost every day since I've made it. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Tight would not fit well for support, but I'm missing I, the bottom six eyelets. There's no lacing in there right now, so I'm only laced in the top half and not the bottom half, so I'm going to have to see. But yeah, I need to move and hoop, and I she hasn't gone through the hoop test yet. Does it, um... Yes, I know in the back. I have breathing issues, so I can't have anything touching my ribs. Does it does it affect your breathing when you wear a corset? It doesn't. What honestly, the hardest part is if I put too many of the steel bone lace, the steel lacings in, is bending over to use the facilities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I couldn't imagine anything restricting. I couldn't imagine anything restricting like that. I'm like. Actually, I find it very calming to my nervous system to have a little, not so much at the ribs, but the midsection compression, mm -hmm. like literally calms me down. It's like wearing a big hug. And <laughs> why wear a brassiere if I can get this much chesticle compression from totally. something that doesn't like pull on my shoulders and make me feel uncomfortable and not feel nice? Seriously, um, we need to campaign for Phoenix in the um, encyclopedia on Wikipedia that she invented chesticles. <laughs> no, I did not. Somebody I else. I stole that term <laughs> because I loved it. Because all these guys are like, I use testosterone and I have man boobs. And I'm like, no, they're chesticles. But some I stole it from somebody else. I'm not unique. I just steal stuff and claim it as my own. <laughs> I need somebody that testosterone can give you man boobs. <gasps> oh, oh yeah, yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yep, I knew if somebody. You, <laughs> it causes too much estrogen, and you get little like moves, and a whole <laughs> bunch of the bodybuilders have to go and get their little like moves yep. removed. I or actually if you are a fat. <laughs> oh, sorry, I keep talking. No, no, no! Please keep going. Please, it's okay. Oh, I was gonna say. If you're a chunky adolescent with XY chromosomes, then sometimes you also naturally get moves. And yeah, because adipose has its own, can create estrogen, which creates moves or chesticles. I knew someone that um, played high school football and took a massive amount of steroids. And he has moves. <laughs> 
he has um it gives you breasts but he was taking estrogen with um combination of a bunch of other different um drugs right and the it's, serums it, the serums all the things Please oh yeah come find me on my public facing but commander why you, have you ever would... heard of have you ever heard of respital yes uh yeah i heard that that was one of the side effects was giving teenage boys um the boobs cuz um that was just one of the things that you know Oh yeah, and it gets grown men. You got a lot of people. You got a lot of people in high school taking those meds, or they don't even know because their parents are like, "You're going to be the next football star." Here, we give you your vitamins every day. Just take this one too. It's so sad and scary what parents are doing to their kids without them even knowing. You know, there's quite a few people that I'm still friends with them on Facebook. They are total pretentious weirdos, but I want to see the effects of, of steroids 30 years later. I played high school football in 1990, <coughs> and, and there are people who um, took massive amounts of steroids, and I'm just like, I, and there was one who was the biggest jock. He was this giant human being. He was the meanest person on ever, ever. And um, I'm not outing him. Um, I saw him at a pride parade. <laughs> and he's a big dude, so you can't miss him. And he played college football, so he's he's fit. <laughs> yeah, um, Michael one, of, Hearn. one of the long-term effects of testosterone is it does something to your arteries. Oh, yeah, it does. And it makes... Um... Oh, what is it? Uh, Cardium. Cardiomyopathy. Yeah. It makes your heart enlarged. And there's and people doing problems. this to them. Sorry. I find it weird when people volunteer for that. I'm sorry. Call me old school. That's I like you could you could send all your hate mail to Godless Hilling on Twitter or Instagram. I'll respond to you on Twitter. <laughs> and then of course testosterone also makes your hair fall out. It I right, mean which, it's so funny how so many of the well, bodybuilding is a untested sport. So a lot of the ladies do low doses of anavar and certain things, and they mm -hmm. and they have some virilizing side effects and they're all like oh you look like a man but they're actually or like I'm just a lady who does drugs for my sport or exactly. strong man those guys are like the trend bologna sandwiches and the hello test halo test in they use that is if crazy you ever, if you ever want to sorry if you ever want to see the side effects of like long term use of um, steroids on women Look up Gail Devers and Jackie Joyner Kersey. Oh, if you look right. at at what she looked like um, in 1980s, she looked like Jackie Joyner Kersey. And in the African American community, um, it's actually a trope. Her jaw started growing because she was taking testosterone. She she bulked up. She looked like a completely different person within six years. So, in the African American community, like. Like, um, it's kind of a mean trope, but if someone's jaw is too big, they will ask you to your face if you're on steroids because of Gail Devers and Jackie Joyner Kersey. Where they people didn't know back then, but now because we have we have the objectivity of you know the hindsight of of being in, in the future, they're in the past, you know, we can go back and look and see what she looked like, you know, before her Olympic career. And well, after. That, just look at well, any. That Soviet Olympian from the 1980s who was a lady. True. True. Well, they're that's like, the, you, want, that's you want to be professional? Here, let us hand you out the Rolodex of supplement, of juicy vitamins. Oh, what were you going to say, Commander? Well, when women transition to men, right? When you have someone transition, if they're one of the things is like when 
boys and girls start out, they have similar builds and similar body types, but then the testosterone actually causes a differentiation. Mm -hmm. And um, the more testosterone, the more masculine features. So when men are transitioning to female, they actually have it's harder for men to pass because Mm -hmm. they have, you know, they have um, facial features and secondary features, which either have to be dealt with with surgery or if they didn't have a lot of tea in their system, then of course it's not that great. But testosterone changes bone structure and a lot of things. And, you know, I don't know, but maybe the women who uh, were bodybuilding way back when, they won't get um, osteoporosis, but they look like dudes. I think that's part of that, like... That was part of the problem because um, Jackie Joyner Kersey just was uh, a normal woman and she started juicing because she was the top of her sport. And she did that to herself and she slowly more, you know, she slowly morphed into what I remember. Because by 1994, 1995, she was the top tier. Her and Gail Devers were the two fastest women on earth. But it was because they were juicing. <laughs> right, I know. But then there's that. What is it? The were they from Nigeria? Where? Oh, Caster Semena. Caster Semena. Is that? Yes. Where yeah. they actually have a abnormally high rate of being XXY. Yep. And having Klinefelter syndrome, where they do naturally produce more testosterone. But even the gentlemen who transition, the it. IOC, their testosterone limits are like 400. No XX human naturally produces a test levels of 400. I'm going to forget the units right now, but no. it's so dumb because you it's a whole other league. And in combat sports, like if you transition, we need more categories in sports because Everybody should participate, in my opinion. But there are certain things that if you started off and have extra testosterone, you are literally going to kill somebody. And it's just waiting for the day for it to happen. The the H-bomber guy, um, he has a video about, you know, when when you had the people on um, uh, InfoWars talking about soy and estrogen. And Mm -hmm. it... Turns out a lot of men don't even get near 400. That's a problem because it should be between 700 and 1,000 on the American units that I'm forgetting right now. So I have a, I have a quick question. So, does, so because I'm um, completely bald up to here, does that mean I'm really Yeah, you, got high, you, you have high teeth. <laughs> You're just subject to and- androgenic alopecia that it doesn't necessarily matter your levels. It's genetics and the Everybody on my draw. mom's, on my mom. I started balding um, at like 18, 19. Everybody on my mom's side is bald. Every, like. Well, that that's where the gene is. That's where the gene is located. It's on the X chromosome. So when women wind up transitioning to men and they take the tea, their hair falls out. Mm -hmm. (sighs) I've always wondered about that. So when you guys, when you guys said that, I was like, oh, that makes me, uh, um, you know, that makes me extra manly. I heard the Trojan man, the commercial in my (laughs) head. The condom commercial. You're like, and I'm here for the condom. Damn, the bald guy with a, the with a ton of tea. <laughs> oh, that's a t-shirt. Godless sewing with a ton of tea. <laughs> ah, I have so much testosterone. I have you know what you know what's bringing this on? Um, I shave my head, but every once in a while I give myself a break, you know, because my skin is so sensitive, and I've been shaving for 20 something years now. Yesterday, I'd let my hair go for four or five days. Do you know I don't look at my head? 
I have become more bald. <laughs> I'm bald all the way up to here now where my hair won't grow. So now I have this, I look like a 1970s soul singer. <laughs> or a Pope from the 1600s. <laughs> well, I've been balding, but it, you know, for a while I look like I had an M on my head because I always had this weird dream of growing my hair back. And uh, and then I will let it go for a couple of days, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is reality. This I'm bald. Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> because I have an uncle. Well, if you want to do... spend tens of thousands of dollars, about twenty thousand dollars, they can take hair from everywhere and put it on your head. Go to Turkey; it's less expensive. So I'm going to give away the secret, and allegedly, allegedly, and if they sue me, c- come at me. Hair club for men. Do you, I watched their infomercial? I stayed up one night because I can't sleep, and they had a black guy in a car, so they had me. They had me from the <laughs> jump of the commercial. They had me, and I'm like, oh, he grew his fro back. Do you know what they do? They paint your hair, and it's called they, wigs. They literally painted this guy's head. I grow my hair back. Here. Yeah, that that doesn't do anything. Other That's than true. make I, your scalp a different color. And I was like, is this really what I stayed up for? Is this why we're here? Like, I was so disappointed. No, I the, was... minox- the minoxin- minoxidil with the microderm abrasion may or may not be helpful. They look like baby doll. It, it's plugs. It is plugs. And I was so disappointed. <laughs> I want my fro back, but I don't. I'm not willing to um, suffer for it. Like if I'm bald, I'm bald. I rocked my well, fro long enough. Oh, go they ahead. don't do plugs like they used to. <laughs> what they do is they take like groupings of five hairs, and they put it one place. Five hairs here, and over time, multiple treatments. Um, they thicken it up rather than trying to do every goddamn thing at once. <laughs> they, they, you know what? Like, we used to have um, laws against false advertising. <laughs> We've lost that. You know? If we, but if you can't lie for minutes. money, then what fun is that? They showed a bald brother just like me, and they showed him in a car going to go see his family with a fro. And I was like, "Oh, you got me! I'm watching. I am in watching." In the Ferrari this. with the like the hot car with the, like the little PP energy. <laughs> Forty five minutes into it, they're like, "Oh, it's plugs and paint." I was so mad. No, because if something's viable, like when there was a first um, transplant, when a man got pig lungs. And he lived. I'm like, uh oh, I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> I'm a, if man, if I got pig lungs, I'm gonna start smoking Marlboros again. I'm telling you right now, I miss those things. You're gonna be the <laughs> old fashioned Marlboro man with your leather and denim and like on your horse and like, I got this, I got you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't smoked a cigarette in almost four or five years. Still to this day, Commander, I'm not kidding you. I have I still have dreams where I'm smoking because it was my life. It was such a part of my life. Like I just have dreams where I'm like I'm at the shop or like every time anyone would call me, I'd light up a cigarette. I'd get in my truck, I'd light up a cigarette, you know. I drop off the kid. And a cigarette. <laughs> like, oh Kurt Vonnegut, that was the best book ever. Nicotine will do it. I'm in the same boat, Alibaba. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> you need some man. We need us. Can Manscape please sponsor all of our channels? You know that is not too far fetched because no, I'm anti plugs though. I'm anti plugs. See, I'm not willing to suffer to get my afro back. Like it's not that serious. It's not that serious. <laughs> Especially like when I see my son, he has this beautiful full. I know it's amazing <laughs> he has a curly fro i had the exact same hair so i i don't like vicariously live through his hair <laughs> and you just want to sit and braid it like your sisters did to yours i i'm, I'm against torture like <laughs> i'm one of those people i will not um suffer for fashion 
you'll never catch me in uncomfortable shoes. I tried cyber goth um, boots. I almost broke my ankle. Oh, no, I love my <laughs> seven inch platform heels that I shut off two weeks ago. I like, I love those boots. <laughs> I'm so mad because I left them uh, with my ex-wife and, and I, I looked at her one day and then I was like, what happened to my matrix boots? She's like, bro, that was 11 years ago. I was like, yeah. She's like, I threw them in the trash. <laughs> she didn't even send them to the Goodwill. Oh, they were, they were vintage. You could have sold those things. Those things were awesome. But I'm not a, like, I'm not a cyber goth kind of guy. I tried. <laughs> That's yeah, just sign what me the up. hell is cyber golf anyway? Oh, it's black and leather and pipes and tubing and gas masks and everything creepy and amazing. And the new age cyber golf is really, really beautiful women who pick which Power Ranger they want to look like. And then <laughs> Power Ranger. No, I'm still the dark vampire. Your worst dreams are your nightmares. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, Alibaba. Never suffer for fashion. Make it work for you. That is my motto. That is absolutely my motto. Like I refuse to suffer for fashion. No way. <laughs> I'm not. That's why you'll never catch me in high heels. Not even in a funny way. Like um, I. I'll wear, I would wear them if they were tied in like skates. <laughs> I've got boots that tie, tie me in like that. Oh, sort of cyber. It's like the Matrix. Like the mm -hmm. Matrix is cyber goth or that new video game. What is it? Cyberpunk 2077 with all the great music. And I'm not going to sit up here in front. I talk about all the time how I watch anime, but I also listen to um, a lot of cyberpunk. I discovered it late in life and I like it. <laughs> or Witch House. Witch House is my jam. The dark, broody, industrial, yes. German, but not, but it, you don't want to unalive yourself, but you're like, this is what I would want to listen to if I was in that mood. I find weird channels on YouTube because I'm constantly sewing or, or doing something, you know? So I find the weirdest channel. Commander, oh. I love your animation. I like... <laughs> I, I cannot... I could, but I that's not my skill set. <laughs> it is like next yeah. level. Well, with those those machines in the background... Those were free models because I don't, I, I, you know, you both know that I work full time, right? And if I yeah. had to, um, if I had to do everything from, from scratch, like this is actually a whole arcade and I did have to make some of the machines like, you know, the ball machine where you roll the ball. And I did, I did make those um, little, um, you know, the the psychic machines, and yes. that is that the the picture of the devil there that was actually provided by Operator Starsky, and that's from a church that in um, it's from like four hundred years ago in a church in um, Italy, and it looks like. Putin. That's why I hmm. put that there. Because that, that guy in the leather jacket, he's a preacher who prophesied wonderful things for Vladimir Putin. And of course, we know how wonderful things are going, proving that he was a <laughs> false prophet all along. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And of course, I have Trump there too. You're, the guy um, next to him is Trump. That game in the far left corner reminds me of this game. Um, Isaiah and I, we would go to Chuck E. Cheese all the time because, you know, when kids are little kids, you know, you get bored. And there's a Chuck E. Cheese right by my house. And there was a Dance, snowboarding Dance revolution. There was a that's snowboarding game. game. Oh, that's awesome. We would race each other on a snowboarding game. 
and it just it was so much fun. It was so much fun. But now he's old. We, and we like balancing on um, stuff, or was it? You know, how did the yeah. game go? You're on a fake snowboard, but it's two rails on both sides. So you can hold for, you know, for old fogies like me, you can hold on. <laughs> it was, it was so much fun. I, I miss, I miss the Chuck E. Cheese days. Now, excuse me. And I, you're going to laugh when I say this, but Chuck E. Cheese has become really sanitized. They took the coins away because of COVID, which is understandable. But now you're on a card. And I'm going to tell you, I feel like I got ripped off. Because when I would spend 20 bucks, they'd hand me a million coins. And Isaiah and I'd be there for three, four hours. We'd eat pizza, you know, drink a pitcher of soda, you know. And, like, um, we were there for an hour and I had to, I had to pay another 20 bucks. No. That sucks. So when, there was a yeah. place by me. When I was a little, called McSugars, and then they were bought up by um, Skate and Putt. This was um, in Davie, Florida, and every Sunday you would get twice the number of tokens for the same price. Oh, I miss those days. I'm, I was an arcade kid. I like, um, I was addicted to going to the arcade. I would do chores. I was nice to my sister. I would shut my mouth and be polite. So my pop would give me a roll of quarters. Like, <laughs> here, kid. I miss those days. And all the machines in that picture there, I'm actually using video from gameplay. So it actually is not just a static screen. Oh, you got the baby awesome. picture. You got the baby penguin up there on the alien thing. It starts out, oh, shit, I need more quarters. <laughs> oh, man. No, I'm not going to go into my ageist trope. No, I'm not going to fall down that hole. Because I always do. Of like, all oh, these kids won't. Back when we, back in the covered wagon days when we had tapes. <laughs> back when we had to walk four miles uphill through the snow. To get to school. I was raised by ages, so I'm trying not to be one. Because I was constantly told how modern day conveniences made our generation lazy. And it's like, bro, if you hate a microwave so much, why did you buy one? Because <laughs> they were flexing. That was the old school. That was flexing. We were rich enough. <laughs> people don't remember is that, man, when the microwave first came out, like people wouldn't use it. And like like microwave food was considered inedible, you know. <laughs> it was but called was the radar games. range. <laughs> First commercial microwave was called the radar range, and it sold for nine thousand dollars and was only used on commercial aviation to heat up food. Oh man, I you know you just reminded me I have um old. Um, future life magazines from the early 80s and some of the computer ads I'm like man someone paid like nine grand for an IBM like are you kidding me or like you know the, the prices were just unreal by today's know, standards also you took know? up an entire room in your house <laughs> true true it trips me out how you know how far we've come and just think how many of those computers would it take to equal this one? I have one $1,200 one that's brand new that's got a, a 4060 RTX mm -hmm. card. I'm going to upgrade it to 64 gigs of RAM, but the hard drive sucks. I'm going to use it as a render machine. And then the one that I'm currently on that I've been using, it was about $2,400 when I bought it. How many of those $9,000 IBMs would it take to equal this? <laughs> a lot. Yeah, exactly. I, I think about that. Whole... Gonna... Oh, go ahead. Oh, go, oh, go ahead. Somebody's going to build me. I'm not flexing. I Never mind. I don't want to talk about it right now. Never mind. You go ahead. No, um, we love um, Techie Talk here in the House of Sewing. 
It's okay if you're, someone's going to build you a computer. <laughs> Somebody is going to build me a computer, a desktop, because my laptop is having trouble streaming. And I'm like, I quoted them a price and they're like, I could do that for substantially less. And I'm like, all right, I think it might be time. Partly because I can't hardwire my computer into my internet which makes live streaming funny. And yes, I do have a hoop on my hair knot because I can't sew when I needed to play with toys. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's catch up with the chat. F oh, Alibaba, a friend of mine in 1982 or three that paid thousands to download a game that was Stick Stacks really port thousands of Canadian dollars for long distance for downloading at 20 bytes a minute. Oh my god. So they paid a shit ton of money for a crappy game. I still have that early expensive game for Apple 2C. Yeah, I Apple 2E <coughs> threw me off in the early, in the mid 80s and that's why I'm a PC person. I touched it i hated apple and i was like give me a pc any day i will not use apple ever and i still don't i grew up with a um apple 2e i still have um two of them and a no, ton I of a programmer it was pcs in my house or nothing and that's all i know i love them do you know, you know it's really funny um I keep all the floppy disks because it's not like I can access them. It's not like I'd put them in, but like my dad used to work for NASA and Boeing. So part yep. of me is like, well, I should keep these. Fair. I know. I think my le next computer is going to run on Linux because I miss Linux. <laughs> I don't know what the new operating system is, but it's going to need a hard drive. <laughs> oh, Do you know what's so funny? I have freed up so much space on my desk and now i have no space on my desk it is so funny <laughs> and you're going to be lacking your desk when you bring me sewing machines <laughs> i need i need this space in this room future <laughs> life magazine i love these i absolutely love these um where's let me make myself big for a second I um I used I'm so glad that I have doubles of all of these. But this is Future Life magazine. Let me see if I can find one of the old ads. These are awesome. Because they thought Carl we would Sagan. all be Th that one I was thinking about getting framed. <laughs> um but there's one where they think they they were basically saying by the year 2012 we were all going to be cyborgs. I don't want to be transhumanist. <laughs> Future Whenever life. I hear that word, I start to gag because I think of Alex Jones. I only think I of know. Elon Musk. Alex Jones doesn't scare me that much. <laughs> Cryonics and the future perspectives. Freeze me, man. Freeze me. <laughs> I know. Where's their screen capture or screen grabs? <laughs> Who's clipping this stream right now? All my haters and and the, that one weirdo who literally made a hate channel about me. Right. <laughs> I'm looking at you. I'm looking dead at you because you're probably watching right now. <laughs> um, I'm trying to find the Oh, sorry. Come here. Sorry, Commander. Go ahead. Do, do, there's an episode of the Golden Girls where they come out and um, the all, they, they've all had their heads frozen and they're all just sitting in trays with ice around them except for Sophia who bothered to bribe the guy who thawed them out. But it's funny. I'm trying to remember... Exactly so, how the skit went, but typing "Golden Girls Frozen Heads." So they slept in Tupperware in the freezer. No, no, literally, they're all supposed to be frozen heads. No, I get it. It's a bad joke. <laughs> 
I think I know what you're talking about. Did you ever watch? I think it was called Lex. I grew up with Showtime and HBO. Yeah, that was like. Um, oh, here we go. That was that was almost um, the that the special effects was almost um, movie grade. I, that was such a good show. They in 1979 they thought we would be living like this in the future. No, which is yet. now, which is like right now. <laughs> I love these old magazines because they, um, the the um, the cyborg thing kind of made me laugh because they were like, in the future, we're all gonna have implants and we'll live longer and blah blah blah. blah. Man, go watch the movie Elysium. <laughs> it will make you not want to live forever. <laughs> Or read the book. The book's better. It usually is. <laughs> but that's a one Matt Damon movie. But I will tell you, um, oh man, I'd see, I am so glad that I was raised around geeks that just kept things like this. <sighs> Look at those Cylons. Look at that's <laughs> a real Cylon right there. Come on. <laughs> Look at Leonard Nimoy and his glory. Back before Star Trek. Star Trek was always political. Was that before or after What's-His-Face killed his wife in the swimming pool? Who? Uh, Robert Blake? Um... No, the captain. <laughs> no. William Shatner killed yes, his wife in one. a swimming pool? Yes. I don't know if I can show that on YouTube. That's funny. I don't know if I can see. They yep, were she not. She was like an Olympic level swimmer and she drowned. And it was like, mm, something's not right with this story. Do you know, in 1980, Sea, sea City urbanizing the oceans. They were forward thinking in the 80s. Yeah, now we just I have remember. trash oceans. Sorry, Commander. Do you guys think if I sent in, I could get my Star Trek duty jacket? Do you have enough points? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I might have to make this. I'm going to have to keep this one out. That is so beautiful. Look at that Star Trek duty jacket. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the next project. <laughs> oh my. I was recently watching someone who was like, they were basically saying that like one of the hardest things to work with is futuristic prints because the metallic and everything just ends up looking cheap. And yes. so I, oh, I could, I could totally make that. <laughs> I do have to agree because the printed metallic four way stretch fabrics, they get so compressed in shipping and handling that you sew stuff. And after two washes, the the metallic stuff starts falls off, and they look like shit. Absolutely, hey nerdy, long time no see. Well, I still watch your channel. <laughs> How are you? How are you? We're just hanging out, having a good time here, looking um how people how people were optimistic in the eighties and in the late seventies. <laughs> Going, remembering Epcot from the 90s was <sighs> just something. Because you still had the influence of all the work that Walt Disney did in the 1964 World's Fair. I forgot about this one. Weaponizing dolphins. Oh, we did that. Been there, did that. Why do they have hands? What's happened? To, what is wrong with them? Oh man, that duty free, that Star Trek duty jacket is staring me in the face again. <laughs> That's the next project. You are sold, <laughs> hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> I do have a suggestion on fabrics. I does anyone make fabrics actually woven with metal? where the fibers are actually metal rather than the cheap 
Yeah, um, I actually have um, anti snake gear where it's woven Kevlar. I have loads of Kevlar, but Kevlar's not metal. Nerdy, I have a ton of Doctor Who stuff. I have a ton of Star Trek stuff. I just, I rarely pull it out because no one cares anymore. <laughs> it's going to be part of my fleet museum is all my um, Star Trek stuff. I just love this memorabilia, though. I absolutely love this stuff. They thought when we would I be lived... on Mars by 1988. Poor guy. Too bad. Poor guy. <laughs> When I lived in Virginia and I was um, building the heat treat furnace for the gemstones, I thought of making a loom to make metallic cloth because of how much current you needed for the heating elements. Have you oh, ever yeah. thought of making a loom and making your own fabric? Yes, yes, I have. I there, the but, whole room and the skill set that I do not own, possess right now, I don't have the space. Exactly. And my Loki would pee on it. <laughs> Serious, seriously, don't show that to Elon Musk. He, he, how old, Alexa? How old is Elon Musk? Like fifty one. Elon Musk is fifty one years old. Oh, he was a kid. It. You did. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, I'll be right back. This whole conversation is making me wanting to get my woven metal. I thought I was gonna make you use the head, but <laughs> that's just another excuse. Let's see here. What the? Oh, Alibaba! I saw a loom for sale this week. Needs lots of work. I. Lots of space I don't have. Yeah, that's my... I would... The... Oh, what is it? Oh, words are escaping me. The card weaving. I would love to do that, but I do not have the time or the gumption. I can spin fibers and sew things, but weaving, uh, that terrifies me, but I... I don't know if it's in this lifetime <laughs> or yeah. Oh, Liz says Liz is back again. And she says, Hey rodent. Yes. You are a human. I've not met before. Welcome. I'm new to the streams and nerdy rodent says, Hey Liz, welcome. Welcome to the chicanery. Oh no, dead air. What do we do? Oh, Godless is back. Thank you for saving us. What do you have? No, you're muted. I forgot I muted. made myself big. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have chain mail. <laughs> so rule, rule number one about chain mail is chain mail is really personal because it keeps your stink. I've had this for over 10 years. And, it, and like it smells like every Renaissance fair. It smells like every um, every tuba you've ever smoked. <laughs> every picture I've ever posed with it in, like, and you get sweaty in chainmail. Like for real, yeah. you get sweaty, you know. But chainmail is awesome. I have I need a cap though because it pinch it pinches all, every little um, hair. You know, it pinches the back of my head. But um, I love my chainmail. <laughs> so I guess I do have wearable um, wearable metal but there's Mills probably can't. some I'm sorry no no, no please, please. That from Scranton oh, Pennsylvania there is probably someone who sells actual metallic cloth there's a very famous story about um the kind of cloth that rich people used to be able to have. Herod the Great actually had an entire outfit made of um, woven silver. Oh, wow. 
I'm just thinking of my woven um, Kevlar because it's semi indestructible. It it's sold as snake resistant. Right, and you need special scissors and a special needle and a special thread. I have Kevlar thread, but the tools to cut Kevlar I don't do not have yet. Oh, it's been a while. Oh, oh man. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the Why would I not have chain mail? <laughs> right. Do you I need gauntlets? Get... A headpiece is not a, a not functional gauntlets and what's the leg pieces that have a different name that I'm forgetting right now. I have no I uh, I wore this when I wore I, I made um on my misfits chainmail outfit. Um I totally wore this because it went with like a period piece, but I That's miss real. wearing this. Thank you. I do feel like I'm in um, Indiana Jones. <laughs> Jane Mail is awesome. And I love the look on people's face when I show up at the Renaissance Fair and I'm like, I want to play too. <laughs> I can play. And I have, I have period, um, I have like accurate clothing. I have a whole outfit. I weirdly purchased a um, like a costume um, a costume pattern, and I've made most of the clothes from it. Ooh. I know someone who who made copper chainmail, and it was antibacterial. Wow, that's awesome. That's one thing about this stuff; it reeks because I have worn this for hours and hours at a time, and the in I... the stink. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I have a suggestion where you don't necessarily need to um, change the look of it. If you plate it in silver, silver has antimicrobial and antibiotic properties. But now that's as far as bacteria won't grow on it. Do not take colloidal silver and turn yourself into a fucking smurf. <laughs> But silver has antibiotic properties. Antibiotics are better than silver, so no one do anything stupid. Commander but gets the quote of the evening. Silver will not stink. Great, we we. It's a good thing we went through our disclaimers earlier. Oh, you can say all kinds of crazy stuff. In the beginning of my stream, I give a real full disclaimer that this is for entertainment purposes only. If your feelings get hurt. We're all grown-ups here, or we pretend to be. <laughs> or there's this was... on the left and the right, or in the front <laughs> and the back. You can jump up at any time. This was the pattern that I was talking about, though. I fell in love with both, so I made both outfits. Oh, that jacket, that circle. Oh. I made a vest out of the coat. Like, I made a I... full vest out of it. <laughs> I want, okay. Oh, I oh. And I scored that pattern at a thrift store, too. Now you're making me want to do a D&D &D stream. I've seen the best armor original and reproduction. I, I like this because it's not too heavy. And I um, it's just chainmail is awesome. Chainmail is awesome. <laughs> really, Baba, what have you not experienced? Like, you are a human <laughs> I want to talk to. Please come to my stream and talk to me. I'm going to need to find. Are you on the on the twatters? Because I will hook you up with a link because I want to talk to you. Nerdy, I'm taking yourself into too. Civil, silver smurf. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm taking I'm taking notes as well. That blue guy. So that guy that's blue on Wikipedia on Google when you type in colloidal silver was he like some people say he was born that way or did he really take colloidal silver? No, he, he really took it internally. Sorry, he he did two things. He drank it, which is not going to turn you blue all that fast. Uh -huh. But then he basically put it all over himself. Two, and it got absorbed into his cells and then he went out in the sun and it developed um, the silver oxidized and turned him fucking blue 
but you will eventually turn blue <laughs> if you drink it. So don't do it. That goes back to that fle that flesh eating drug we were talking about. I would stop oh, right at flesh eating. Yeah, you you wouldn't even have to tell me twice. I'd be like, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's a two hands hard pass. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> That's why years ago, and I know um, we're not fans of them right now, but this was like when I first got on YouTube four years ago, five years ago, when I was just um, just watching videos and didn't even know about communities or anything. I watched a video about a zombie drug in Russia. About how um, their people were taking a zombie drug and it was and they would develop a flesh eating virus and people were still taking it. I looked People that up <laughs> and it's it's horrible. It, it's, it's called uh, it, gate or something or other because um, that part of it is when the skin starts cracking and it looks like gator skin. Oh, between necrotizing fasciitis and all the other stuff. Crocodile, Crocodile. was awful too. Oh, yeah, that might have been it. That might have been it. That but, is yeah. it. Oh, my gosh. I would <laughs> I'm here for the adventure. I'm here to have fun. But I would never take a drug that would um, take off body parts. It's not worth it. I've heard they've laced, they laced the fentanyl with the flesh-eating drug. The Russia was, one was crocodile. That's another thing, like, um, I saw a video of a cop just touching fentanyl and passing out, and I was like, oh, yikes. They finally invented a scary drug that I didn't, that, like, wasn't readily available when I was a kid. Is, um, do you know, at my kids' high school, they give fentanyl warnings. And they have like fentanyl classes now. It's it's so strange. It is so strange. I just decided not to do the drugs because I would basically be murdered by my mom. <laughs> when I was a kid, um, I was bold. I don't know what I was thinking. I lit up a cigarette in front of my mother's house. I'm a born asthmatic. Um, I had a lot of health problems as a child. She walked up to me and she slapped the cigarette against my face. <laughs> she was angry. Did you ever smoke cigarettes or anything, Commander? Oh. Oh, you'll live longer. <laughs> I quit four years ago and I, I sound like, um, I don't even know. Like this is, this is me healthy lungs. <sighs> Smoking is not good for you. <laughs> My grandmother, I saw her just before she died. They were pumping black tar out of her lungs. So, you know, it's really funny. Um, I actually knew somebody. Um, her name was Grace. She, um, oh, Alibaba, I think I saw the exact same video. I think I saw the exact same video where the kid, the young, I call him a kid, he's just a young cop, where he passes it out. My parents knew better than to make me do things I was doing. <laughs> My parents were really strict, and some of it worked, and some of it just made, you know, they used to always say that the Catholic kids were the best liars because we had more the the most rules. <laughs> so you had practice that confession. Yeah, <laughs> very true, very true. I'm back on track from time traveling. I just got home from work. I knew you'd come back. Liz has a TARDIS. Liz absolutely has her own TARDIS, and she travels around the universe. He was on the back of the Ford Explorer. <laughs> I 
You know, I need to bring chainmail back. I'm just gonna randomly start wearing my chainmail. Make chainmail great again. This is strangely warm. I look like I'm looking for the Holy Grail. Yes. <laughs> I was just trying to think of what lines could we use from Monty Python. <laughs> oh, the rabbit scene. Or the one, two, three, one, two, five. <laughs> no, one, two, six. No, one, two. With the holy hand grenade. That's the skit. That. <laughs> uh, I upcycled a uh, um, tis but a flesh wound t shirt. <laughs> Every time I put it on a on a denim on a denim, um, I cut the sleeves off of a denim shirt. It's my summer wear. You'll see it. But every time I wear it, people are like, "I love your shirt. I love your shirt." <laughs> Jane Mill, this is heavy. Eventually, like, eventually, I'll start going like. <laughs> oh, that's funny too. Wait, what is your <laughs> Do you know, um, I watch a lot of Stargate. I'm obsessed with sci-fi. Um, like, you know, most people know that I'm a total Trekkie. I watch a lot of, like, documentaries. And Chris Judge, who um, played Teal'c on uh, Stargate SG-1, he's the one where I got the phrase from saying that Chainmail's personal because his character, they would wear, they would wear Chainmail suits, like, in the early seasons, and they stunk. To the point where each person had their individual chainmail marked. <laughs> like, oh no, this is this actor's, this is this actor's. Absolutely. Liz. Need to plate it in silver and all the stink will go away. <laughs> I could I could actually do that at my job. Oh, electroplating silver. Oh, I miss shit like that. <laughs> oh, side tangent. I watched this. YouTube video about somebody who was at this w workshop that made scientific glassware and they're looking for new apprentices and I was like I might want to change my career and be a glass blower for scientific glassware because glass blowing is awesome and scientific glassware you say ground glass and I'm like oh you have my heart in your hands <laughs> I took a class in Arizona, and that was one of the things I'll never regret. Glass blowing is I made a bunch of really crappy pipes in a, in a really bad flower vase, but it's a skill. It is such a skill. It is borrow, it's so beautiful glass blowing. Borrow silica glass. Yes. The substance that has the least, the smallest thermal expansion coefficient. Of any known material. You could get a disc of it as wide as the United States and heat it up and by one degree, and the thing wouldn't even expand enough for you to be able to measure it. I know Pyrex. I've blown glass. I, I can't show it right now, but I do have a piece that I blew when I was in Corning, New York. My heart wasn't into it. I just wasn't that good at it. It's hard, but glass, it's <laughs> like the fire and the glass. It's like when I spin fire, I don't know, fire and fire just gets me off. <laughs> there are certain things that I really pick up and everything else I call snowboarding. So I surfed for a very long time. So naturally, I thought I would be an amazing snowboarder. I was not. No, the coldest... Ooh, Shirty. <laughs> I like that noise the chain mills me <laughs> on my on my vest. <laughs> but you know, I stunk at snowboarding. I was better at hanging out in the lodge and telling stories next to the fire. No, I put me in the hot tub where the snow is going, <laughs> and that's my place with a hot cocoa <laughs> or a hot toddy. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's one of the reasons I don't go to the mountain anymore. I'm like, I'm not a skier. No, I don't like the cold that much. I moved because I don't like the cold that much. They're like It was like the hipster thing to do was to go to mountain high and spend a bunch of money for a snowboard and look really cool to see like all the people from your town 
um, 75 miles away from your town on a giant mountain in the snow. It just was way too pretentious for me. Right, like Gwyneth Paltrow's new latest win. I went to the Venice. Oh, Glass the Paltrow candy. Vag candles. What what pretentious um, <laughs> pile of shit thinks that anyone wants to smell her fish stench snatch? Um, Here at the Godless Sewing Channel, we do not um, give medical advice, but don't shove stones up your hoo ha. No, and don't make candles that smell like your cooch. That's just gross. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow, I laugh because like a long time ago, I had a huge crush on her. Like in the Royal Tenenbaum days, I could hang out with her in her bohemian weed smoking days. She's literally sh shaving, uh, shaving. She's literally shoving stones up her butt and selling them to people. She's lost her mind. She has. Have you? That's like what is it, <laughs> Bella Hut? No, not Bella Hadid. That YouTuber who was like selling like her water farts. I didn't think that oh, was real. God, that's disgusting. No, it, it is, is real. real. It's gross. No, a long time ago, Isaiah told me there's some girls selling her bath water. I said, "Bro, like that's just a um, that's just a a, a YouTube story." He's like, "No, bro, it's real." And no, he showed it's it to real. me. I'm like, oh. <laughs> he it was right on that one. Thunderfoot has some good glass blowing videos. I do a little glass blowing. Same, same. Like I suck at it. Like I wanna. Um, I a long time ago, my cousin and I, we like, we made this pact that we were gonna start making swords, and like we don't talk anymore. But I'm serious. I have the whole setup at the hill. I, I'm gonna start making my own swords. <laughs> yes, glass blowing, metal forging. I'm like, please sign me up. Playing with fire is my friend, but I can't do that for like six months out of the year because fire season is a real thing. <laughs> That's one thing I really worry about, though, because up at my job, like it's a property, it's 65 acres. I can do whatever I want, but if I put one plume of smoke in the air, they're going to send a helicopter, then they're going to send the fire department, then they're going to send the cops. No, they seriously like like <laughs> close the metalsmith shop in my town during fire season they can't oh, forage wow. during certain months during the daytime it oh i love it but you can't do it hmm there are others in cali that are into making swords and armor there was a show on the sci-fi channel where um it was called the forge i believe and every week they would like make swords and hammers and they'd be I, time. No, it wasn't the forge. It was, um, I'm going to forget. Oh, fuck. It's so strange that I can, when I put my glasses on, it is so strange that I can but actually you can see, see shit. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, can just... read without being dizzy and it doesn't hurt my brain. After I don't have a migraine at the end of the stream. <laughs> just as a side note. You can make extra money on selling steel scrap if the steel scrap was, if you can prove it was from before the atom bombs went off. Because then they use that steel for special um, machinery that is radiation sensitive. Like, Do you know what year that would be considered? Um... Before the atom bomb, so that would be like before 1945. Oh, because um, the building that um, I skate in in my videos was built in 1955, and it's built as a bomb shelter. It's like six layers thick um, brick and steel. Well, if so that... I'm ever in, if I'm ever in LA and um, we get the sirens, I'm, I'm DMing you. Hey, I, I, I have, uh, I'm prepared. <laughs> Come on down. You can join the fleet. <laughs> and the the um, stage that I'm in as well, the the stage that room is built as a bomb shelter as well. But you have to cover all the windows, and I always thought that was dumb. Because the gym has no windows, so it truly is a bomb shelter. But but the other building is rated as a bomb shelter. 
Yeah, that it's probably indirect. But if you're in LA and you have windows and the windows blow out, um, even if the structure survives, you're dying from radiation. Poisoning. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And the gym, it has a gate that you pull down to lock yourself from the from the first door. So you are like literally locked in that building. Old school, like 1955 bomb shelters are um, really cool. They're really cool because they have really cool architecture. I'll do a tour one day. I yeah, just no pre-1945, <laughs> pre-Trinity test. The one cool thing about, um, about the fallout shelter <laughs> that we call a gym is that we don't have to put a sign out. Because when I lived in Oregon, anywhere where there's a bomb shelter, they legally have to put a sign. I don't want you to know where a bomb shelter is. <laughs> I always thought that was weird because I worked in downtown Portland and I would explore like I've wandered. Well, Port downtown Portland's not that big, but I I wandered the entire area and there's bomb shelters everywhere in downtown Portland. And they're clearly marked and they're open. I've walked in them. <laughs> there's a bomb shelter near me. I'm not going to say where it is because it's probably the only place like it. That's a fucking bomb shelter in the country because it's so unique the people who have control of it but it's clearly marked too i wonder if that's a law i've always wondered about that because in california we don't have those laws but in other places they they kind of tell you like hey you, you have to give everyone a chance <laughs> no if you don't live here you no welcome <laughs> quite honestly um Human beings would be like, if anything did, all those tough talking people would be gone in 10 minutes. <laughs> so there would be nothing but smart people left around. All the people who like, it'd be all the mole people who survived. I need a bit, a bigger underground shelter. <laughs> so as a mole person, <laughs> do you know, the other day, the other day, um, uh, Someone I respect was kind of panicking and they were like, what happens if the grid goes down and blah, 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 and this and this. And I, I looked at her and I said, then I'll become a warlord. <laughs> I have my sewing machine. I have my outdoor cooker and I know how to make stuff. I'm, I was raised by a hillbilly. I'm ready. Do you know, and also um, like with a recession coming. When I lived in Germany as a kid, my friends and I would play in bomb shelters from World War II. Was also was also defended with pillboxes. Yeah, Ellie Baba, awesome. you are amazing. Please, are you on Twitter's? How can you like just not be in the chat and come to my stream? Because I want to talk to you because you fascinate me. Absolutely. Do you know <laughs> up the street? Up the street from my house is something that's really depressing that I rarely talk about. And they tore down the processing center, but the main house is still there. It was a processing center for Japanese internment camps. Yeah, but at least they had baseball games. <laughs> they yeah, tore it down. The <laughs> that was the only thing I don't like FDR for. But if it hadn't been for that, his career would have been perfect. Alibaba, you're always invited on here, and Phoenix does a stream on Sundays. Yeah, from earlier, what I'm three p three thirty p.m. PST, so six thirty East Coast time. Um, if you're on any socials, I'm on Phoenix Election. All of the wow, I can't talk. But <laughs> I reached that point of the night too. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I ordered a pumpkin and eat steak flavored Cheetos that I hope my human brings home to me from India because I want them in my face right now. Steak so sad flavored. in Canada. We had those two. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I they, know. But between <laughs> those and the um, indigenous schools. Oh, I'm going to forget the names, but yeah. Alibaba, you are always welcome. 
how can I find you? Because I want to talk to you more. You fascinate me. <laughs> it's really, it's really weird. Um, the the place that I go to, that it's literally up the street from my house. That's why I'm not saying the name of it, because it has a very distinct name. But um, it's a famous hiking spot. And like when you get to the top of the hill, you can see the plot where they would like like send people like oh you're going to this bus you're going here and here but it's grown over but you can literally see where they would um uh process people it's it's just strange it's just strange and that happened in the modern era you know i don't find oh yeah, yeah you're like locked down on your socials uh, fair i'm feeling Quite honestly it's better that way. I've been doxxed. I've been like, it's better that way. Trust me. <laughs> I learned such a hard lesson um, YouTubing when someone got arrested by my house. I learned such a hard lesson. Like, like I literally got doxxed. It was sad. So it's better to hide. <laughs> Fear. Unfortunately, I have a website and a public facing business with all sorts of things. So I'm not, I'm, Yeah. Oh, and that was I'm my here with my live face. <laughs> that was my neck workout. I love chainmail. This is this, it was warm too. Oh man, Your that was warm. Weather wear for next year. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I've owned my chainmail so long that I made this <laughs> because I literally work in a machine shop. So I I made this for my chainmail so I could hang it and 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 I hang it in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of machines do you have? You have like milling machines, lathes, yeah, the full, grinders, everything. The full, range? Because, um, full range because it's a shop from equipment that's been there um, from 1955 on, and so like it's anywhere from like antique machinery to modern machinery. And all and, I don't um, know if I would ever go back to machining again. The the purpose was to make the ranch self sustainable, but over the years, outsourcing it it kind of like it's better to call a guy than to make this deal, put the fence up. Like it's a process. They used to do that back in the day, but now with modern technology, like a lot of the stuff, like uh, like even with the stuff at the shop, I feel like it should be put in a museum compared to like a lot of the stuff that I have now. <sighs> You know what? I think about this all the time. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Yes, I could. When I see people like online where they charge each other, I'm like, I could do that. I could easily do that. Charging for what? Um, low shank feet. Um, for, like, sewing my, like my Hild, that is a different sewing machine foot than modern machine feet. A low shank. She's special. <laughs> Fortunately, I have my two two sets if, of feet that fit her. Oh, if I I'm have precise it. measurements, if I have precise measurements, I could easily uh, make it. I easily. Ever get if I ever oh, go in a house again, maybe I'll buy a machine shop. And that's a that's another thing. Like over the years, um, my like my predecessor would do smart things. Like when we were locker shopping, people think I'm kidding when I say that we bought a locker out that had half a Harbor Freight in it. Because I'm sitting in a room with the rollaway toolboxes. <laughs> <laughs> I have, but like. Um, we took half of those machines and put them in the shop, you know? So, like, a lot of it um, is just stuff we've acquired over the years. And, like, like my tractor diagnostic tools would be useless to anyone if you didn't own a 1979 Ford tractor. <laughs> so there, there's... Ford, but let's get back to Alibaba's last comment. There's a cording foot that needs to be made for corsets. Yes, I want this. I saw your picture and I need this tool so I could there's the there's courses that you make with 
steel and plastic boning and there's the other ones that you make with cords and I don't have that foot and I need it in my life. I you have, have two I... that oh my god. Wow. <laughs> and you have the knowledge of earlier Wheeler and Wilson number one machine, so 1855, 1863, and then up to eight, then 1879 up. Alibaba, can you come live at my house, please? <laughs> Leave Canada. Just come live at my house in the great state of wherever I live. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a t-shirt. The great state of wherever I live. You know, I, I need you to um show me how to not mess up my um 1906 singer because I've left it, I've left it there because I don't want to mess it up. I've literally like like left it where it is. I got it to where it completely can turn over, but I want to restore it back to its glory. Says the guy who's literally driving around with a singer sewing table in the back of his truck. Still. Take it out of your truck, you farce hole. Summer, you know, I was just waiting for all the um, storms to pass because I'm going to start cutting and planning very soon. Like this is the season to start cutting and planning. You know what's so funny? I You can point and laugh at me. I don't know why I didn't do it. I did not take down my grapevines last year. I don't know why. Okay? So with because all it's not the, been warm enough. Now is the time. I know, but they're already growing back. Then you are, Then do it now. Cut off the good <laughs> shit and be done with it. But here, catch up with the chat. Liz says, I want another corset. I can't wait to see the finished one. I it is done. I just need to finish lacing it actually. And all your sewing knowledge is mind boggling. I'm learning a, a lot. Fear and Alibaba, you know way too much shit. I want you in my life. <laughs> you are in my life. So how do I can <laughs> so that that particular um sewing table was trashed beyond recognition i got it from rooster's relics and one of the reasons that i purchased it for the price that i did was because the table was beyond recognition because it was left out in the rain for years it was just left outside so i'm going to take the top and all the wood off of the table but, but the iron is still good it's still cast iron sing good old singer cast iron you know but yes, it's flopping in the... It, well, no, it's so heavy, it's not flopping anywhere. It's in the back of my truck. <laughs> right? It's chunking in the wind. And it sounds like Commander's ready to go to bed. And our East Coast friends are like, and... Oh, that's true. <laughs> that is true. You know, I do pull an Elvis. <laughs> Here at the Godless Sewing Channel, I do pull an Elvis. You know why? It's because I live on the West Coast. And it's like 11 o'clock at night. Like, I'm just getting going. <laughs> Fear. Right? I'll... I'll go. I uh, I know someone who's probably streaming right now. <laughs> right. And you have a kid to check on to make sure he's not depressed he, and beating up he is. He Mortal is, Kombat or whatever it is he's, he is playing. <laughs> he's super sad because he didn't come out here and do hands. That's how I, I know. know he's hurting. No, he's hurting. Like, but growing up stinks, though. See, that's the. I want to say this it really does. Like, I. Having an autistic child, I had the beautiful happenstance that my son developmentally was just a year or two behind. So we watched cartoons for two extra years. We played with GI Joes for an extra year and a half. He was like nine or he was like 10 or 11. We were still playing with toys. And I'm like, yes, he's 13. He thinks it's all lame now. <laughs> right. I yep. And now cry. you need to console him because he's having adult world problems. Uh, man, I'm telling you, like, but this this is the stuff that that uh, makes you strong, you know. This is it the is. Stuff that and I've got strong. a cat butt in my camera right now. <laughs> Does uh, do you have anything you'd like to show? I will be back on Sunday at three thirty PST unless we have an emergency stitch and bitch meeting <laughs> on whatever day that needs me meeting. And I am at Phoenix Electra and all the socials. Well, YouTube, Instagram, Rumble, Locals, and the Twatters. And don't wait till tomorrow when you can be fabulous today. 
Commander, do you have anything you'd like to show? I think she checked out. Yeah, I don't blame her. Like this wet the West it's Coast. Late. Is <laughs> yeah. It's those crystals that are like, oh, it's not late enough. I'm, I'm, on, the, late. I'm on the West Coast. I could go all night. I'm gonna be asleep in like 45 minutes. <laughs> Seriously, because I've got to put I've got to work at 10 30 in tomorrow. <laughs> well, if you've made it this far, I'd like to thank everybody. Um, like I always say, reinforce your seams, be yourself, and I will definitely, definitely. See you next time. Rock out with your claw.